<laughs> a big disgrace. <laughs> big disgrace. Going to put you back in your place. Yes. <laughs> Whatever. Yes, yes. Oh no. <laughs> Uh, Emily, I I couldn't hey. resist. <laughs> yes, thank you. Uh, I I don't know if you got the um uh, the notification that I, I sent your your package, Joe. Yes, I got it. Okay. Thank you. And your okay. package, your package of brother thermal paper is right here. It still has to be packaged up and shipped. That, but it's that's right okay. There. It that's comes okay. in this in this foil. Here's the actual brother label you can't read but anyways I'll show it later i'll do a show and tell later yeah there you go <laughs> so how's your new year brian uh pretty good didn't really do anything um stayed out of trouble that's good <laughs> excellent well, that's no fun staying out of I trouble know, huh? <laughs> and emily happy new year to you how was your new happy year? new year greg my new year was <laughs> you know all right. Yeah. It's all right. All right. It, it sounds like like that's kind of how it was this year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm welcome. Still alive, so it was. Good. I know, huh? That that's yep. the most important thing. So that's right. <laughs> I'm having some uh, quick and dirty coffee here. Nice. Oh yes. Actually, actually, technically, it isn't because I consider quick and dirty coffee uh, instant coffee. Mm. Uh, this was isn't this coffee. was actually. Uh, yeah. <laughs> The, this was actually uh, in uh, a mocha pot, mm. Uh, mm. sometimes confused with espresso, which is not technically it's not, espresso. No. It's a very strong coffee, but <laughs> it's not espresso. <laughs> I had um, AeroPress is typically what I make in the morning. Mm. Does that make it pretty strong? Um, not necessarily. It can oh, be okay. strong. Depends on how fine you grind it and how much you use in relation to the water. But it's kind okay. of like... If you think of it as a French press, but you extract the coffee out of it very quickly. You, you only let it ah. steep for about a minute, then you press it through the through the, the press through a filter into your cup. So it doesn't okay. get muddy tasting or a real thick like a like a like a French press. So oh this is this is super muddy. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I love strong coffee, so <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Yep. So it is show and tell. And I, I have a lot of stuff, but first, uh, does anyone else have anything they want to show? Or I, otherwise, I could dive right in. Dive right in. All right. Dive, <laughs> dive. <laughs> okay, so I am, I am obsessed with, other than typewriters, I am obsessed with uh, smart pens and smart notebooks and uh, uh, digital tablets and all that sort of thing. So... Let me make myself big here. We'll watch Ted type for a little bit. <laughs> um, oh, <laughs> got to spotlight myself. There we go. Okay. So I am into these rocket books. Mm. And if you're, if you're not familiar, it's a, it's, you may notice it's a very, very thin mm. notebook. <laughs> you skinny. Um, but uh, you have these pages. And you may notice they look a little weird. These are just random. Uh, I was doing stats for work um, ah. and whatever notes. So, oh, uh, we're working on making paracord kits at work. So, um, hmm. yeah. Uh, so these are just some random notes. You use specifically a pilot friction pen, which is an erasable pen. And, and you may be wondering how, this, how in the world this relates to typewriters, and it does. I'm going to tie it in, trust me. <laughs> so essentially, the paper in these notebooks is, uh, it feels kind of plastic. It, it, it feels a little bit like Tyvek, mm -hmm. um, but, but basically anything that's written on here, I can use a, like a wet paper towel and wipe it off. And it's, mm -hmm. it, it's essentially like a whiteboard. Mm -hmm. Then you have uh, the QR future. Code. Yeah. QR yeah. Code. Yes. Uh, so they have an app, of course. <laughs> so with the app, uh, you can scan the page. And uh, I'll, I'll show you on the, the printed sheets. It'll show up a little better that way. Um, but down here, there's a series of symbols. And you can mark the symbols. And depending on, on which one you mark, 
it'll send it to a different place, such as your email, your Google Drive, um, and several others uh, like Evernote and so on. Wow. So I had the idea that, oh, and the nice thing about it is regardless of what angle you take the picture, uh, it will straighten it out uh, because it's using this thick uh, black border to hmm. decide what is what is square. So it's going to make it square for you. Uh, so you straighten it out if it's curled, if the paper's curled, does it flatten it? Uh, what's that? If the paper's curled, does it flatten it? Oh, <laughs> uh, it, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> um, that, that might be a bit. Much, I mean, this really wouldn't. The the texture yeah. of the paper it really wouldn't curl. Yeah, yeah. It, it's pretty stiff. Um, so on the website, because these are about, I think this was about thirty five dollars. So you know, kind of pricey. But if you go to their website, you can print out free hmm. sheets. Uh, th this is a dot grid. And here you can see better the different symbols that you can uh, assign mm -hmm. and you just mark it in there. So mm -hmm. then when you scan this, it'll automatically send it to those locations and you can, you can mark as many as you want. So, um, and these, these are free to download and then you just, you just uh, install the, I, I'm pretty sure the app is free as well. So technically you can do this for free. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you download these, uh, they're a series of PDFs. They also have a lined one and a grid and some others that are more uh, specific, I guess, like a, a form letter for goals. <laughs> All right. Greg, so, what's, what's the app yes. called or what is the whole system? Uh, yes, it's Rocketbook. Okay. And their website is GetRocketbook dot com so and i highly re recommend it it's it's pretty awesome yeah uh so i i printed out multiple uh, ones of these sheets and mm. of course i typed on it <laughs> i didn't see that coming oh, <laughs> so i typed on it and i was like okay so oh a future i forgot to mention so when you handwrite the notes it can it can do a uh, transcription of your handwritten notes, uh, transferring it into text, basically. Only if so, you have good enough handwriting though, right? I know, huh? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, it, my handwriting is pretty bad. So, uh, it, you know, it makes some errors, but it's, it's fairly accurate though, actually. It might but be I, kind of fun just to mess with it, see what yes, it comes up with. I know, huh? You know? I know, <laughs> right with my left hand or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So um, I deduced, or well, if it can, if it can have optical character recognition for handwriting, it could probably do it with typing yeah. also. And sure enough, it did. So this is the one I actually typed on. And then here is the right yes, and this is the actual the actual picture that it took. So this is just picture format. So this is, this is essentially exactly what I typed on there. Did it OCR it okay? And that is next. Ah. This was the OCR. Now the only issue is when it does the OCR, like if you reach the end of the line and but the it's not the end of a sentence, it's <clears throat> is still gonna essentially create a new it, it does a carriage return. And on, on the computer, a carriage return works differently than on a typewriter. So it's assuming that it's a new paragraph. That's why it looks double spaced. Mm. Um, but the text is there. It was, uh, I think it was completely accurate. I don't think there were, there were any mistakes on it. So what I like about that is if you, if you show us the, the image of the actual scan again it yes. looks like it looks like the dot grid is straight and what i mean by that is most smartphone cameras have pin cushion distortion mm -hmm. and anybody who's photographed their types their type the typewritten pieces for their blog knows that the edge of the image is usually curved because of 
pincushion distortion. Yes. And it looks like this system corrects for that because it makes the grid, the background grid straight along the edges, which is very cool. I like that. Yes. Yes. So the fact that this worked, I, <laughs> I, I enjoy the simple things in life. So this really, really excited me. I was like, oh, yes, I have something interesting to show for show and tell. <laughs> so yeah so i'm that's very, very pleased with that yeah so and that's better than a usb typewriter see <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, so and this in particular would be interesting for um, my blog entries because on my particular blog i do a picture of the type page or a scan of the type page and then i i do a transcription of it in the text so that people can still search my blog is if you just have a bunch of images on your blog, mm -hmm. uh, people won't be able to search it. So essentially whatever yeah. you see on the type page, I also have a transcription below the, the picture. So, uh, and this would be perfect for that because it does both in one pass on my, on my uh, printer scanner. I, you know, I have to do two separate things and I have to go into Google drive and what yeah. So this is amazing. QR codes? Um, you know what that is? that's a good question <laughs> that, like does it give each page an identifier or something uh, I believe it does because the pages do have numbers mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think it does yeah there each one is different yeah you know what sometime I should actually scan that and find out what you what should. in the world it is <laughs> maybe it uh, organizes them and and gives you like a little uh, you can do a searchable thing so you can find that particular page again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or at least but, the text or the file for it. Yes, yes. But I, I highly recommend Rocketbook, if not for the actual uh, notebooks themselves, but for the the free uh, PDF downloads and and the app. So. The system. <laughs> yes, the system. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I think it was last week. Uh, I was talking about the the brown typewriter ribbon, mm -hmm. and I, I did my my sort of unscientific test of putting my finger on it, and not much happened. Uh, checking the wetness. Uh, How did so, that work out for you? Well, uh, <laughs> I, I do think I do think there are issues. I, I don't know how well you can see it. Yeah, it's, yeah, see it's it. not consistent, but it's nice. It's a nice dark brown. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. The color's nice, but it's it's far from consistent. And I think there were actual globs on the on the ribbon uh, mm -hmm. because the the A in particular. Uh, it, when I started, it was perfectly clean, typing a perfect A, and when I was done, the A's were completely filled in. So mm -hmm. <laughs> I think there was some globiness going on there, but. Uh, mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, it, it's acceptable. It, it was just a little disappointing that it was it was that. Um, and, and bear in mind, I'm I'm uh, fairly well into the ribbon now. Mm -hmm. um, when I first started, it was really bad, really bad. I think I was typing a letter. I think it was a letter to Diane, uh, Diane Mayer. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and that that was really inconsistent. So. Uh, but now I'm fairly well into it. So it's evened out, but you can still kind of tell. All right, a couple more things to show. Um, at work, I was bored. And because <laughs> in the library, we're very, very slow. And so I'll, I'll be sitting at the front desk for hours at a time. And I'm left with a lot of time on my hands. So I, I did a search of our catalog. Well, actually, the whole library system catalog. And just search for typewriter, and it came up with I came up with about four books, mm -hmm. um, and some of them I ended up returning. One one was a children's book, and it was there was like not much story to it. It was a mm -hmm. very basic story, so I was like, eh, that's not worth showing. <laughs> but uh, one that uh, I I was very very very. Uh, excited to discover is the man with the Ooh. golden typewriter oh. about Ian Fleming. So after he wrote his first book, and I don't remember offhand which was his first book. I'm, I'm pretty sure Casino Royale was the first published one, but I'm not sure that that's the first one he wrote. But 
after he he wrote his first book, he spent I uh, I think it was one hundred and seventy five or seventy nine dollars on a gold plated Royal Quiet Deluxe. Mm -hmm. Wow! <laughs> yeah. So, and there's someone in the uh, I don't remember who it was now, but there's someone in the the typewriter community that has one oh, just like that yeah lots of people do uh, it well it was the first time i had seen it so i was like mm -hmm. what someone in this high product community has it that, that's a very popular pattern for collecting okay uh, does okay. the uh, does that typewriter collector out in california the guy that has all the famous typewriters does he have uh, ian fleming's actual gold-plated royal do you that think? i don't know uh steve huh. uh steve yeah what is his name uh -huh. So, yeah. so back or so something yeah it's something like so that. something is his last name yeah i'll have to but, uh, look research that but yeah, i wouldn't he's, be he's, oh well, sober sob sob uh no not sob never mind uh, <laughs> <laughs> not in that context sober off. Sober yes off. it is That's sob it. sober off <laughs> Yes. Anyway, he, he probably has it because he has a lot of famous people's typewriters. Yeah, he he definitely has his research down. So if he if he had one that he was claiming was, it probably is. Ah, there we go. So, uh, I, I was looking for the the uh, the pictures in this book. I, I kept passing by them. Um, so I love this picture. Oh, cool. And I I I couldn't tell just by looking at it what kind of typewriter that was. Olympia SL. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's SF, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I posted oh. in, the, in the typewriter groups uh, and, and they told me right away it was an Olympia SF and I was like, yeah. ooh, I have one of those except I have an earlier <laughs> an earlier version. I have a late 50s version. Yeah, the um, one he has is like a 67 or 68, something like that. Yeah, so that's on my wish list now. That's at the well, top the, of the my problem, wish list. The problem, Gregory, <laughs> is that owning an Olympia SF doesn't make any of us Ethan, you know, Ian Fleming as a writer. <laughs> it doesn't? <laughs> I know, so fair. I know. <laughs> I'd like it to be that way. Yeah. But. Uh, so then uh, another one uh, that came up, and this one I was a little disappointed in, but it's, it's still kind of interesting. Uh, so it's, um, how I write the secret lives of authors. Mm. And so it talks about various things and it shows their, their setups and huh. uh, that sort of thing. Uh, like one, one of them is talking about post-it notes and, and so on. Um, That's I was neat, actually, I was hoping mm. that they would have, they would have had more about typewriters, but there is one, one author that is, is talking about his typewriter. Mm. Mm -hmm. Olympia. So, yeah, there you go. <laughs> John Byrne. There you go. Yeah. yeah. So, so that's pretty cool. And there is one more. I'm going to take myself off uh, spotlight for a moment because I left it right over there. Okay. <laughs> so I'll be right back. Be right back. <laughs> Let's nobody hijack the live stream. Oh, now. nobody do that. Yeah. Let's, let's not do anything <laughs> interesting while he's gone. <laughs> <laughs> He's back. Let's do a wave. <laughs> <laughs> Are you doing a sports wave or what? We're doing, trying to do a wave, but Ted's not paying attention. Oh, oh sorry. Come on, Ted. Sorry. Oh. There you go. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> the things Looking you guys do when, I'm, when I step away. <laughs> the mice will play. Yeah, I yes. know. Okay. So this I actually found on Amazon. And it was dirt, dirt cheap. It was under $5 for a brand new uh, children's book. Oh, and this one, oh. this one seems a little better. So this is Typewriter mm. by uh, Yevgenia Neyberg. Mm. And I have heard of that one. I, I didn't do my homework. I, I had intended on, on reading it so I could tell you what the story was about. I think I have a vague idea. We could do a story time if you want to read it now. Is it about a typewriter? <laughs> it, it is. It specifically is about a Russian typewriter. Oh, oh neat. Yeah. So, oh. unfor unfortunately, yeah. I, I, unfortunately, I can't read it because uh, that would be a copyright infringement. But oh, um, right. yeah. Yeah. Um, but I can show you the pictures. <laughs> since you're a, since you're a librarian, Gregory, can you at least shush us once? <laughs> Thank you. <No. laughs> Not gonna work. 
<laughs> we can never keep Joe quiet. <laughs> no. Nope, nope. I have to mute myself. So the, the artwork is really interesting. It is. And oh, that's neat. Yeah, it's, it's illustrations. Basically about, yeah, mm. basically about a, a Russian typewriter. I, again, I should have read the story, but I didn't do my homework. But the one that I, I ended up not checking out, um, basically all that was, was these kids found a typewriter on the beach. And they discovered that whatever word they typed on the typewriter would appear. So at one point they typed beach ball. And so a beach ball appeared. And so I was like, ah, that's a pretty lightweight story. And <laughs> wasn't worth showing or even checking out. So, yeah. but yeah. Could have typed SF. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> I know, huh? Um, yeah. Old plated so. royal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So lots of great artwork in here. Oh, um, uh, there's, a, there's yeah. a laptop. Yeah, that's a nicely <laughs> illustrated book. Yes, it really yeah, so is. It was just uh, under five dollars. So, you know, I, I think that's little... one of the things I really like about children's books is a lot of them are so nicely illustrated. You know? Yes, yes. Um, I was very upset. This came Amazon, so you know. Mm. <laughs> so there's a, a big crease right there. Uh, mm. It was just loose in a, in a box with some of those like air bubbles. <laughs> So it was it was bouncing around in there and it should have been plastic wrapped. Yeah. But yeah. Nevertheless. Right. You can always yeah. return uh, it. It's Amazon. I know, huh? <laughs> yeah. I I figured on, uh, you know. I wasn't I wasn't gonna complain too much. Yes, yes. You don't want to cut into Jeff Bezos's profit yeah. by oh, no, returning no. it. <laughs> we we gotta keep that guy in business. <laughs> Poor, poor guy. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the most interesting thing about Amazon is they started as an online bookstore. Oh, yeah. That, just, that yeah. just blows my mind. <laughs> I remember that and, back. I, yeah. remember that. Just I was working for an ISP when they started. Ah. Uh, yeah. Could have got stock, but nope. Oh, <laughs> man. <laughs> I'm right, not so going to we... sell books online. That's crazy. <laughs> I know, huh? All right, so that's it for me. So does anybody else have, have anything to show? or Otherwise, I can do check-ins. Uh, uh, Eric, how, how, was your, how was your New Year? It was great. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Yeah, thanks. Uh, how was yeah. yours? Yeah, very nice? good. Very good. Welcome to, yes. the, to the live stream. Thank you. Thank you so I guess much. I could, I'll go next if anybody, nobody else has any objection. Uh, okay. Right. I'll, First, I'll, go ahead. Yeah. I, I'll, I'll just I'll just have since we're talking to him I'll just have Eric do a, oh, yeah. a quick uh, introduction. Yeah. Please sure. do. Uh, yeah, I, I've it, actually uh, I've been I've been lurking here for a little while. I've uh, tuned into the the stream and I, uh, gathered up the courage to finally <laughs> come on camera. We're awesome. so scary. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm 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 sort of a, a shy person uh, in general, but um, I uh, actually I uh, discovered Joe's uh, YouTube channel. Um, around the beginning of uh, or just before the pandemic and um, and uh, you know just kind of doing a search on typewriters because I was just starting to kind of get into it um, I had seen California typewriter and uh, Tom Hanks is uh, uh, one of my favorite actors and I found out you know he was uh, interested in typewriters and so I, I found found one at an antique store and it just kind of uh, went down the rabbit hole now I have five of them <laughs> that's what happens uh, that's exactly what happens but I've been using them a lot to journal uh, this year. Uh -huh. It's been uh, it's been really helpful for, you know, just kind of making sense of everything, and um, it's really helped, you know, just with my anxiety about you know the whole situation. And oh yeah, it's just uh, it's been it's been great. I mean, I uh, it's a really nice hobby, and I I I, I love how uh, how there's like a little community. You know, about uh, about it all. just as weird as you are. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Well, again, welcome. And uh, yeah, if you don't have anything to show today, that's fine. Uh, but uh, I do want to check in with Bill real quick. Uh, Bill, how how was your New Year? Um, it was it was good. Um, my New Year started off with a really interesting typewriter story. Um, okay literally and uh uh so I, I don't know what that means for me and typewriters in 2021 but we'll we'll see how it goes um okay. so yeah good are you gonna tell us this story 
<laughs> well, I was going to let Joe go first. I, oh, I, no, go ahead. I'm, I can. We want to hear your um, story. Yeah, I want to okay. hear. Okay. <laughs> uh, so uh, there was an ad that popped up on Craigslist at the end of last year um, for, for a uh, uh, Voss typewriter. Oh. And, um, and I didn't know much about them, but, of course, Joe Van Cleave has made a video <laughs> about Voss typewriters. And uh, so I, I responded, and this is one of those ads that it didn't have a photo and hardly any description. Mm. And it wasn't located in, here in Portland. Um, but I'm like, well, I, uh, I'll send off a, an email. I, I actually had the uh, week between uh, Christmas and New Year's off. And uh, I didn't hear anything back. Um, uh, for for a while so I figured well maybe it's been sold and then I I got an email back and it's kind of like a cryptic message um, sort of strange so I responded again didn't hear anything back um, and then finally uh, New Year's Day uh, I heard back and it's like if you can come buy it today that'd be great and uh it was the only thing the text said was like, you know, perfect condition. And uh, so I drive down to uh, Salem, which is about uh, 45 miles away from here and uh, uh, get to the, uh, the parking lot of this Carl's Jr. where I'm supposed to meet this person. And there's the, uh, the typewriter case sitting outside of the, the door of the car. And I'm like, oh, I guess he's done this. So, you know, I could tell which one was, was him. Well, it turns out he, he had it sitting out of his car because I don't think he could stand the smell of it. Uh, if you uh. recall, <laughs> uh, <laughs> we, we had some really uh, insanely bad wildfires uh, out here uh, this year. Mm. And, um, and so this typewriter was a, a victim of those wildfires, mm. it would appear. Um, and so I, I was really disappointed because you know this hadn't been mentioned in the ad. And he offered to drop the price and, and I just, you know, gave him this really low ball offer and he took it. So I'm like, I'll try to salvage this typewriter and I don't know what kind of success I'll have. Um, I spent most of yesterday uh, cleaning on it and um, I, you know, I've managed to knock the smell down quite a bit just by, you know, cleaning it up. Mm -hmm. um, but it's going to take some research on how to uh how to really get after it because it's, so it's, it's are there any bad. things that are anything heat damaged or is it mostly smoke damage no no it's just smoke it's just uh, oh. the smell of smoke it's, oh, okay. um, the problem is those have uh, cloth cases so no this mm. one actually had a this was like from the first year mm -hmm. of uh production so it had a uh hard really nice hard shell case okay. um and that i didn't bring up here because the case really smells bad <laughs> um and i don't know you know again i don't know even what that material is but it it reminds me of the older olympia cases like the you know oh, the like silver the SM. ones yeah yeah so it's, it's like, like hard, laminated like a kind of uh wood yeah exactly mm -hmm. and it's all green everything is green um, and so I'll, I can grab the typewriter here in a sec, but that was, uh, my, uh, crazy start to the, to the new year. And now I'm like, you know, did I just, um, you know, waste 40 bucks? Did I, you know, uh, on we'll a see boss? if I'm no. able to, <laughs> well, it, it's, it's pretty bad. I mean, you know, if you've ever gone camping and you're sitting around the campfire at night and all of a sudden mm. the wind shifts, like right in your face. That's what the typewriter smells like. Uh, you can send it to it, me. I'll, I'll endure it. <laughs> Other than the smell, is that, is that the only thing that's, that's wrong with it or? Well, it, it is now. Um, I, like I said, I spent most of yesterday, um, you know, everything was just kind of um, uh, jammed up on it. Mm -hmm. um, so here I'll, I'll grab it and rejoin you. Okay. Okay. Nobody do anything. <laughs> right. Not even, not even the wave. Let's do another wave. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> <laughs> might might uh, be a 
dumb newbie question slash suggestion, but do you think uh, putting like a thing of baking soda in the case with the typewriter, if there's room, yeah, would uh, absorb yeah, you some can, of that? You can try smell? that. Dryer sheets. Uh, I would leave it outside sprays. in the yeah. air for about a week, mm -hmm. and maybe with baking soda to absorb the uh, odors. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's, there's lots of methods you could do. Or cover it, just spray it with PB Blaster and cover up <laughs> one stinky odor with another. <laughs> that, I, that would do it. Or I put it sitting in a cardboard box, box with um, yeah. ose, a, a, a jar of osium that's a, a yeah. odor absorbent. Mm -hmm. yeah. It seems to be making some impact, actually. it's helpful. I would almost say take it outside and leave it outside, I mean, for a while, in the sun at least. Oh, nice. Yes. It's a beautiful machine. Let us know yeah. it's outside so we can come and get it. I'll take it off your, <laughs> take it off your hands if you, if you have a problem with it, though. <laughs> so, so, yeah, this was, um, this was pretty crazy. And um, I wouldn't have known to um, even go check it out if it uh, wasn't for um, Joe's uh, video channel. So... Uh, I, I greatly appreciate it. And sure. This this is actually the the, the first um, machine that I've purchased that has the um, uh, carriage shift. Mm. Okay. So that's that's kind of uh, new for me. And I was mm. reading it, it. It sounds like there's like uh, some of them have a, an adjustment, um, like a, a spring assist that you can adjust. I know the SM3s do or SM7s. Uh, the carriage shifted SMs. Um, mm -hmm. I'm assuming the Voss has a similar system. It's a huge spring in the back that uh, uh, basically uh, controls the touch of that uh, and the bounce of the carriage when you do the shifting. Mm -hmm. uh, and on an SM, it has a screw adjustment uh, directly beneath the spring. Mm -hmm. So if the I Voss see. is similar, you can look for mm -hmm. that. Okay. And also generically, I think the Vosses are built probably just as well as the Olympias. Mm -hmm. So you got a really good quality machine there. Yeah. 40 bucks for that. You got, you did not get ripped off. Yeah. If I can get the smell out. Yeah. Well, yeah. I do get the smell out or you make a nice glass case for it. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> so put, um, put it in a glove box and you can type in with the sleeves. Yeah. The glove box. <laughs> I get one yeah. of those little, uh, the, the lead glass. And yeah. Yeah. And yeah. <laughs> There you go. It, uh, another uh, $500 later and I'll be ready to type. <laughs> there you go. That's right. <laughs> so yeah, that was, that was the start to my uh, new so, year. Kind of crazy. I think you need to name this typewriter the Phoenix because it ris <laughs> risen from the ashes oh, and, and it might that's end good. up being your best typewriter. I have a feeling you're going to well, enjoy I, this one. I had planned on calling it Smokey, but uh, <laughs> that's good too. Phoenix sounds a little bit more. Uh, there you um, go. Um, uh, a little Majestic. nice. It's, it's up. Yeah. Majestic. <laughs> Better than stinky. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Um, and, and so um, the other thing that I had briefly, um, so the first time I joined you guys, um, I um, was sharing the um, facet typewriter mm -hmm. that I had uh, purchased. And uh, the, when I when I got that typewriter, it came with um, a variety of uh, things, uh, some some different typing paper, mm -hmm. high type, um, the uh, ten day touch typing. Oh, oh wow. neat! That's great um, stuff. They come with erasable, the the erasable bond. Course? Parchment Pardon bond. Me? Mm. Did it come with the records for the Smith Crow? No, no records. Oh, okay. Just the uh, just the book. Mm. Um, which is a shame. I actually would have been able to play the records, <laughs> but uh, yeah, no records. You can get the and audio the files other thing online. Was, oh yeah, yeah, good oh, idea. Oh okay, interesting. Well, the the other thing is this. Uh, it's a uh, a hand uh, typed typewriter manual. Ooh, oh, interesting. Uh, that oh, was wow. put together by Mary Oi, it, May twenty fifth, nineteen sixty six. Wow. And, uh, and so this was kind of uh, interesting because she's got some advice on horizontal centering, um, oh. vertical centering, 
um, some examples that she's grabbed on formatting for uh, letters. She grabbed them off the wow. internet back in 1966. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Here's, uh, here's um, formatting for um, letters uh, where it's all typed up, but then some handwritten notes. Oh, this is seven blank lines. Um, uh, should use the current date. So um, she notes that even though this letter was from November 10th, 1966, it should have actually been May 19th, 1966. Mm. Um, and cool. so just, just a variety of things like that and, uh, kind of fun. So, yeah, uh, definitely. I, Interesting. I, uh, I want to share that. And then the, the, um, last thing, um, is that, uh, since I had the, the week off, um, I have been, um, having so much fun with all the, uh, typewriter, um, things and, um, influenced by you folks said that I went ahead and uh, started a typewriter blog, yet another typewriter Yay. blog. Oh. Okay. <laughs> so uh, I've never blogged before. This is a new thing for me. Um, but I've got all of this, uh, you know, pent up excitement for typewriters. There's Ooh. nobody really. To, what is uh, your blog talk called? To other than sending me. It's a uh, type right mosphere, not typosphere, oh. but type right. Oh, <laughs> I saw that this morning. Yes. Oh, you did. Are I you did. on the yeah. Are you it's, on the blog roll good. of Richard Pulse uh, website? I I sent him a letter, an email. Okay. okay. You're on yeah. it. Oh, good. Oh, cool. Fantastic. Yep. So I are. would ask if you could scan and put online on your blog that typewritten, handmade typing manual that you just that showed us. Be, that oh, would cool. be excellent. Because yeah, that's, that's that, I can imagine that that was a resource that she probably gave to new secretaries or whatever, maybe that was like a really quick introduction to give you the basic skill of how to be a typist without having to go through a whole course. You know what I mean? It's just the essentials of how to format a letter and, and this and that. I think that was pretty cool. It, it's like a okay. style guide. Is what's yeah, like exactly. Yeah. 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 That's pretty cool. Yeah. That's a great idea. So. I, I do. I do have to say that I tried to comment on your post, and it blocks me. <laughs> I, I got your message, and I actually okay. replied to you because that that was um, super helpful. Um, it it turns out that um, so I had um, found uh, uh, you know a, a theme out there that I grabbed for free that mm -hmm. apparently works with another plugin, so that if I want to come back and totally redesign the look from scratch, I can do that. Uh, um, and I never, I didn't end up going down that rabbit hole. Um, I just kind of went and modified the standard configuration, but the plugins that came, I'm guessing it came with that theme. I don't think that WordPress just right out of the, uh, basic installation would have had something in there that wouldn't allow people to comment. Um, but I did a little search online and, and figured out that, um, it's, it looks like having one a particular plugin enabled was preventing uh, you from commenting. Oh, so okay. that should be fixed now. Um, and so I, I truly appreciated you uh, yeah. noting that <laughs> on, on your uh, blog. So yeah, uh, thank yeah. you. You're welcome. You're welcome. And I like the suggestion of using the napkins. Because... <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I, I guess I'll, 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 I won't talk about your post so that people can go and enjoy it because it, it's fantastic. I look forward I, to I, reading I, it. I, yeah. I was Get influenced by uh, Gregory and, and uh, uh, Joe on their oh. uh, exploration of different uh, uh, typing paper possibilities. So, <laughs> I, uh, and his, his is fun. Yeah, his is very, very creative. I love it. <laughs> cool. Yeah. So. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, first, real quick, before so we get me. to Joe, uh, I, I want to ask, well, she, I guess she's off camera. I was going to ask Diane how she's doing. Uh, Bob, how is your new year? <laughs> Bob is muted. Yeah, he's muted. But he gave us the thumbs up, so he's good. <laughs> there we go. Am I unmuted? There we go. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. Unmuted. yeah. Hi, how's uh, your new year? Uh, it was it was uh, good. I was actually able to stay awake till the new year, so that was exciting. 
<laughs> uh, yesterday, yesterday was my dad's birthday. He would have been 70 years old. So I jumped on his motorcycle and took a nice ride out to the Salton Sea, which is uh, maybe 150 miles east, east south of, of here, where we are here in Riverside. Anyways, it was great. It was really, it was really cold. Um, I did not bring a typewriter because I did not want it to freeze. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but I, I got it. Uh, it's been very exciting having the repair shop out in the garage instead of here in the house. Mm -hmm. It enables me to do a lot more things, um, rebuild things in, in different ways. So I'm, I'm very much enjoying that. Uh, about three or four months ago, our chief, uh, let me. I work with a lot of politicians at work, but our chief uh, probation officer, Ron Miller, he's a big typewriter guy, believe it or not. Who would have thought? Uh, so in his office, he even has like a, well, I don't know. And nobody knows that, I guess, but he's got a typewriter desk with a typewriter, a nice Olympia. So he says to me, you know, hey, Bob, uh, we like to do our stop and chats at typewriters, which is always funny to see a not not funny, but here's a an elected official talking to the guy in the blue shirt, you know. So <laughs> we have some really great conversations on people are like, what are they talking? They're talking about typewriters. Those guys are weird. Like <laughs> we don't want to talk to them. But I uh he gave me this machine. He said, I've got this great machine I'd love to give you. I think it's beat to hell. I can't use it. Um, and the platen's way too hard. So I cleaned it up. And uh, it had some duct tape in it and a few other things. I recovered the platen. And then uh, I asked a girlfriend of mine if she wanted to do some artwork on it. Oh. So this is a tip of one. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. And she covered this whole freaking thing in all this beautiful Her best. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, wow. I saw that. I commented on that. That's beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah. And wow. I, I had no, and she put nothing on the top. Mm -hmm. The top is still clear and the bottom is still clear. Of course, I had to repaint yeah. the bottom. Let me just find a good. Anyways, so this has been the new excitement. Well, my favorite is the top, the Adler there. Yeah. Oh, uh, nice. Very cool. So that's been really exciting. I had her also do another Big Smith Corona I have, which she's almost done with. But needless to say, it's been really rewarding. Uh, when I was a kid here in Riverside, there was a gentleman named Gormo that my dad went to high school with. And Gormo pinstriped everything we owned. I mean, you know, the vacuum cleaner, uh, <laughs> the, the, pro the food processor, right? Uh, <laughs> all the cars, the jet skis, you know, all those things in the 80s, everything we owned was pinstripe. My mom's Corvette. Uh, Gormo just did wonderful work. So uh, Gormo passed away, unfortunately, gosh, 10 or 12 years ago now from paint inhalation because he was busy painting and pinstriping stuff. But it's great to think that there are simple ways with something like, you know, pinstriping um, uh, or, or some small artwork that you can add to a machine to make it uh, something different, something mm -hmm. unique, something cool. And more importantly, in my opinion, something that attracts to people. Some of these machines are really ugly. I mean, if we think of like <laughs> yeah. Corona and that ugly green, with the, that army green with the green keys, I, I have no idea what the world was thinking back then. But today it's the 1940s. Cool. <laughs> right, right. They didn't know. They didn't know. Right? They didn't know. Can we, can we call it pimp striping instead of pin striping? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's pimped out. Yeah, pimped exactly. out. Only if you do it, Joe. You know, no, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> hey, so like, Bob, did gonna... she say how much time she spent doing, how long it took her? Yeah, probably about an hour, hour and a half. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. She was That's not here. bad. Just, uh, it, it was with, with an ink pen. Um, it is an ink pen. Uh, she can, it, it does wipe off very easily with alcohol, <laughs> which is hard in today's society as we're all walking around with alcohol on our hands. I don't know. You know, you could get a roll of that thin pinstriping adhesive tape and you could actually do a pinstripe on a typewriter where you could peel it off later if you needed to, right? Mm -hmm. Kind of oh, non-destructive. Yeah. Oh, that yeah. That might be fun. Uh, 
Yeah. Um, I'm, this one I'm going to just take the parts off of and I'm going to clear coat them because it's not the actual top. I, I should be able to get away with a nice clear coat. Yeah. Um, you know, and in the world of motorcycles, people paint stuff and pinstripe stuff all day long. I do not. My motorcycles are not ugly, uh, my, are not pretty. They're extremely ugly. Uh, they're, they're most likely dirty. Uh, Riverside has this great layer of dust. It likes to drop on everything we own. Um, so I, I'm not into pretty. But when it comes to a small machine like a typewriter, it's very easy to hand it to an artist and say, hey, can you make this not ugly? Yeah. <laughs> uh, or for, for today's term of ugly, maybe. Who knows? And I think... There's a lot to that. So I really wanted to share that. I've had great insight. Thank you. Obviously, Bernie. people have pinstripe machines before. Uh, you know, Jennifer Colombo and all the wonderful painting she does. I mm -hmm. I mean, I, how she does all that is is really amazing. Um, and because she rebirthed, it's like a rebirth of a machine anyway. So I'm, I'm excited to do more in this realm. I'm excited to uh, have her do a lot more of my machines just mm -hmm. to make them attractive to the user. I guess so. Mm -hmm. Very good. Anyways, thanks for letting me share. Yeah, thank you. It's cool. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. Happy New Year, May. Happy New Year, everyone. <laughs> hey, Hello. hi, May. And Diane also. Oh yes. yes. Oh, Diane. Uh, you're here Happy early, New Diane. Year. Laundry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know she's here early today. <laughs> she's doing laundry. No, I, I brought the iPad with me and I'm doing laundry. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, okay. Multitasking. <laughs> yeah. Yes. All right. Without further ado, Joe was wanting to show us. Yeah, I got a few things. Uh, thanks, Gregory. So first of all, this pack of letter size thermal paper is going out to you, Gregory. And Thank I'm going to focus my camera. Let's see. This is the model number, if you want to find that on the LB3635, you can search on uh, eBay for packs of this stuff. This is pretty thick quality, uh, you know, uh, letter size thermal paper. And then secondly, you were talking about pins. I have my little pin holster here. And it reminds me, you were talking about markers earlier and uh, about that special paper that you, that you have, the grid paper yes. that you can erase. And of course, we all know about Sharpie markers, which are actually not permanent markers. They erase with alcohol. Yeah. And in my line of work in the semiconductor business, we used to use these permanent markers on plastic laminated job aids at work oh. where you, they had like pre-printed templates for like recording data or whatever, and, you know, you can make your mark and then later on erase them with alcohol. Well, later on, they started wanting to cut down on the amount of alcohol being used as more of uh, vol volatile organic solvents. They were trying to reduce the use of that. So we went with vis-a-vis -vis, uh, wet erase markers by Expo. And these markers mark on plastic laminated things just the same, but they erase with water. Ah, right? yes, yes. So, so you could almost use a Visa V Expo marker and just on any kind of a laminated card like this or plastic sheet, and it would probably work for you. And yeah. uh, then uh, since we were talking about, I think uh, recently we were talking about fountain pens, and this is one of the things that I discovered recently that really works well as a syringe for bottled inks. And uh, I've been currently liking this diamine, um, what is it called? It is uh, ancient copper, ah. ancient copper color. And I've been uh, refilling used uh, cartridges with this this stuff and it works really well with a syringe and then last week my friend ethan gave me a, a little pen this is a keiko rocket okay it's a chinese made ballpoint but it's nicely made Ooh. has a nice clicker but it has a gel cartridge refill right so it's using a gel cartridge in there and it, it's a nice basic writing tool. I really like the color and the way it works and everything. And here's just a sample of my chicken scratching, but it <laughs> writes pretty well on this laser uh, copy paper that we made our little notebooks out of as I dropped the pen. Um, and then, oh uh, yeah, so I also have, you've probably seen the video I did last week. I have a bunch of this laser, 32 pound laser paper. And uh, Ted was nice enough to comment and give me a little insight into why this paper seems to be 
uh, work so well with typewriters, including my Groma Calibri that has a fairly small platen roller, right? But it 32 pound paper, it curves around the platen really nicely because apparently I cut this paper down from the 11 by 17 size sheets into letter size. And apparently paper has a grain to it. And basically I've cut this paper so that it, it folds easily around the platen mm -hmm. uh, a lot, a lot easier, the short grain. And so um, my, uh, the, what is it? The letter paper, uh, let's see, oh yeah, Southworth, the Southworth 32 pound paper that I use, that stuff is almost too thick. It doesn't bend easily around platens. It's almost like the halfway to cardstock. Mm -hmm. And so for a small platen machine, it just doesn't work very well. But this stuff works really well, has a really smooth finish and takes typewriter ink real well. I wanted to briefly show this old postcard. So I have a pen pal out in California uh, Javier, and he's been, you know, handwriting little uh, uh, cards and letters to me. And I sent him an Olivetti ribbon uh, the other last week. And so he sent me a little postcard back. And so I got a little pen pal guy, a friend of mine, and that's been fun. So my friend Bill here in uh, Bill Teft in Albuquerque is an, a, a, a real a uh, fan of all kinds of mechanical things and also adding machines and calculators. And he also likes abacuses. And he sent me this present, uh, sort of a belated Christmas present in the mail this week. And this is an abacus oh. with a little calculator built on it. <laughs> How cute. <laughs> yeah. you, can, you can double check your math. <laughs> I can double check my math. That's right. So I thought that was another little abacus thing from my friend Bill. That's and awesome. let's see, I think that's all I got to to share I'm, I'm i think i haven't missed anything so let me set my focus back okay all right excellent. that's it excellent cool thank you joe yep i'm sorry did joe just say set his focus what kind of camera are you video oh, well, well i'm i'm using a panasonic uh micro four thirds this is the g7 um and i have a manual focus rokinon 12 millimeter cinema lens it's a F 2.2 or actually a T 2.2. So I keep it open, wide open at T 2.2. It's a manual focus lens and it'll, it'll focus down to about maybe mm -hmm. six inches from the lens. And wow. so I can just preset the focus and the, the screen that I'm looking at has focus peaking on it. So mm -hmm. I can kind of tell when I'm in focus and Excellent. yeah. So that's so neat. Cool. Yeah. You guys That's are all cool. so high tech. I know, right? <laughs> Everybody's right. so high tech. I mean, even Ted, you've got like your all extra phone cameras phone. on your typewriter. Yes. That's pretty cool. And my yeah. cell phones. Yeah, he's he's phones. way too high tech. Yeah. 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 He has a whole production going on. on. Says the Raspberry <laughs> Pi guy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, Ted to like a like a caveman. <laughs> oh, well, I don't know about that. I'm using old uh, Android phones for, for those cameras. So, Which is hey, totally whatever cool. works. Well, you figured out how to put like the feed in the screen. Yeah, like, I, I don't, I have no idea how to do that. That's, that's right. a free program called OBS. OBS. Open Broadcasting System. Yes. I didn't show yes. you my, uh, t my clipboard collection here. This is <laughs> part of my clipboard collection. <laughs> But anyways, well, that's a whole other subject for another day. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Let I me know when clipboard. the clipboard collections are going to be, because I have got a few clipboards of my own. Oh, nice. Maybe and I have clipboard yours. questions. <laughs> yes. I have yes. more of a posi box collection, so that's pretty good. A what kind of box? <laughs> oh, posi box, you know, the metal clipboard. Oh, oh yeah. 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 That's probably oh, what yeah. I was going to ask about. But, yeah, what Ted was doing there. Yeah, we, we use them in mechanics all the time. So I've got six yeah. or eight of them. You can't throw them away because they're quite pricey. So what do you do? Anyway. There you go. You I have one of those. Top. I have one of those clipboards that has the police 10 code mm -hmm. taped to it. So oh, it wow. must have been used by a, a first responder or a police officer of some kind. Yeah. So. That's really wow. well done. Yeah. All, all right. I think it's next? interesting that. Yeah, who's sorry, next? <laughs> I was just gonna say, I think it's interesting that uh, so many people in the typewriter uh, collecting community have similar interests. Like uh, I, I saw that a couple of you uh, collect records and uh, fountain pens and, and I'm also uh, big into, into records and fountain pens. I saw the, the uh, B-52s 
uh, album on, <laughs> on the, that back wall. Uh, Brian, Brian Good. Yes. <laughs> call us all yes. hoarders. I think he called us all hoarders. I think that's what this. <laughs> 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 all you need to add is, uh, is, uh, is uh, film photography and yep. A... Yep. motorcycles. Mm, motorcycles. Yep. There you go. That's right. There you go. <laughs> Well, no, I'm actually I'm a the fountain photographer pins. by trade. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh well, there you go. Maybe some retro toys too. Oh, oh pickups. Oh, 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 yeah. Kaleidoscopes. <laughs> oh, kaleidoscope. Classic. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and she just has it handy right there. That's nice. Yeah. yeah. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> I like all the colors. I need. I need uh, colors everywhere. Just everywhere. Nice. Staplers, Ooh. staplers, anyone? Staplers, yep. staplers, yeah. sewing machine. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like sewing a, machine for sure. A Bates <laughs> wire stapler. <laughs> we talked about that. Yeah, this oh, is a Bates hilarious. wire stapler. It uses a spool of brass wire. That's really cool. Let me focus on that. There's the spool of brass wire that, and it it makes the staple cuts it off from the wire as you as you do it. So, anyways. <laughs> Another gift from my, my friend Bill, who has a whole collection of staplers. Ah. He's, yeah. Has anybody <laughs> heard of Apsco staplers by yes. chance? Apsco, no. they're not uh, well known. Uh, it's it's kind of a cheapy brand, but uh, they're hey. I I have had a few. They're, they're good staplers. They're just uh they they were just a lower cost brand. Back yeah. In the day. So. Yeah, there's nothing fancy about this, but the design of it just caught my eye years ago. I was in this shop, which now I dearly wish that it was still around because they had all kinds of cool um, uh, office supply, you know, vintage office supplies and so forth. And Show us. Show um, I just us. saw this sitting in the window. I don't have a, a camera like Joe's oh, where I can okay. focus in. Oh, yeah. That's, oh, that's cool. Nice. But it's just a really simple, clean design. And uh, what was interesting is it looks like the company is uh, based in, it says Rockford, Illinois, and uh, Toronto, Ontario, Canada, but the stapler itself is made in Sweden. <laughs> so I, I, it was just a curiosity. And That is an interesting. That's so a nice Ted, looking little stapler. <laughs> yeah, yeah I Ted, Ted really cool. might know about this, that there is a stapler that does a staple by creasing and folding the paper alone. It doesn't put a piece of metal on oh, it. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know what that is? Those. You uh, have one of those. Ma- there's a couple different kinds. Yeah. Let me see if I, I think you showed mine. it to me when I visited your house a couple of years ago. You might have showed it to I, me. I'll be right there's back. There's a one that I've seen. It's like, yeah. kind of like, yeah. Shred some paper and weaves it, to you, weaves it together. You, you can actually fold the dog ear two pages yeah. on the corner and then tear them and exactly. fold it back. You kind yeah, of do it by do hand. That in school, yeah, yeah. But school. this is a kind of a machine that does it for you. So, oh, okay, I get it. Huh? Hey, here we go. It's <laughs> called the Chadwick. Yeah, Chadwick. Uh, let's see. Great name. Gee, that. That's cool. But it's a it's a little fastener that uh, instead of using staples or any kind of uh, uh, pegs or anything, it actually if you can see what happens down at the bottom here oh yeah it makes a just fold it over and then pulls it inside so that it makes like a like a knot almost it takes that little slab of paper and folds it inside of a uh a fold wow (laughs) it's actually kind of a paper staple how crazy but uh (laughs) yeah it works pretty well a papal (laughs) <laughs> it's a non-metallic a stapler, <laughs> stapler it's, but uh, it's yes. it's pretty nice. you never need uh, to buy any more supplies <laughs> yeah it just uh it just kind of stitches a couple pieces of paper together without mm-hmm. any medium between them Interesting. wow uh it's it's the thing is the bottom doesn't have a uh a, a shell over it and that uh thing that comes out the bottom is super sharp <laughs> <laughs> so if you try to do this Oh, I'm gonna no. end up cutting your fingers. So oh. Ouch. <laughs> don't do that on camera. <laughs> you don't want to do the one-handed staple thing where you're trying to do this. No, no, because that that'll just rip up your fingers. But it, it works if you set it on a desk, right? Uh, if it's on a desk, you just push the plunger down and oh, okay. it, it not it cuts Oops, a little hole, in the, hole in the paper and takes a tab and slips it into a uh, like a little little uh, I don't know fold, I guess. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's crazy. 
but uh, it's I, pretty I think it, Ted, I think you have everything in the world. Uh, no, <laughs> I don't, because I still have wants. <laughs> Ted, do you have a rotary dial telephone? I do have two of them in the garage. <laughs> well, I have You're one right here. <laughs> I have one right here. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, it's actually a two-line phone. Let me focus. Ooh, you can actually uh, turn yeah. this and switch to the second line. And I got this new in box from a telephone store back in the late nineties. It's mm -hmm. a Western electric. Anyway, it's, it's a pretty wow. fun little phone. Here's the question is, do you have it hooked up to your phone line? Currently right now? Yes, it is. Oh, good. Fact, oh. a working phone. You hear the dial tone? Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> Very cool. Let's see the <laughs> Yeah, but I have two of those, you know, those inline filters you're supposed to use mm -hmm. if you have D, if you're using DSL, DSL which filter. I am. Uh, yeah, I have two of those filters in series uh, with this phone just to be sure that it filters properly, because <laughs> I remember I have an older uh, Bakelite roto dial phone that came from a hotel in Mexico and my wife got it in an antique store and we were using that for a while but it loaded down our phone line so badly that I had to quit using it. But this one's pretty good. Excellent. <laughs> when I was a kid, my dad worked for the phone company and, mm. and, and I would go visit him at the central office sometimes with the old electrical mechanical telephone yeah. switches. Yeah, the just, XY switches. It's the most amazing place, you know, to, to, to go yeah. see when you're a little kid. And uh, for him, it, it pretty much wiped out his hearing, unfortunately, because of oh. all the little yeah noises oh. in the background all the time. So, but uh, it was it was crazy seeing that. Yeah, I was a I was a telephone man, so to speak, in the Navy. I was an IC electrician, and part of our job rating was telephones. And I was on a carrier for four and a half years. I was on the Constellation, the Connie. And the aft IC shop was where the dial telephone system was. And it was a Stromberg Carlson, and it used those XY switches, the Stroger XY switches, which was these metal boards with solenoids that would step in these electrical contacts yeah. into the wiring harness. And at the time, the phone system on the ship was a three-digit number system and eventually they assigned a fourth digit so then they could put a prefix on it and you could dial out of the ship when you were in port and had phone lines connected to the ship but if somebody made a crank call to like an officer <laughs> or something like that all they had to do if the if the person receiving the call left the phone off the hook we could trace the call uh, because their XY switch would still be connected and then we could read it and then figure out which other switch right. was on the other side of the phone call. And that's, that's a little thing we used to get called up a lot. Well, we had another crank call. You better trace this <laughs> line, trace the call. There, there was a, uh, like a murder mystery movie that involved uh, that technology. Basically it was really interesting. I, I don't remember what it was called. It was, it was an older, an older movie. Uh, yeah. I don't remember that. Yeah. Uh, I do want to say uh, welcome to Mike and Suquamish. Is that right? Hey. <laughs> Happy New Year. Oh. Mike is one of our one type pa uh, page uh, ah, participants. Okay. okay. I've probably read some of your stuff then. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Excellent. I think Mike is muted. I, but... I think he might be muted. Speaking of phones, yes. I have a hey, phone. Diane. Uh, I, Diane, I have, you have a phone? Have, happy New Year to all. What? You have a phone? What? I do. A phone. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's take a look. It is a locomotive phone. Green. Oh, oh my yeah. goodness. Oh my gosh. <laughs> look at that. That is me. <laughs> I've never and, seen And uh, it actually like rings if you're down here. Um, but yeah, does it sound like a train? <laughs> what? <laughs> yes, it does. Is it does it ring or does it go choo choo? <laughs> uh, it it go it sounds like a train. Awesome. Oh, oh nice. <laughs> I want it. I'm, I want it. <laughs> unfortunately, my 
phone is upstairs or else I'd give it a demonstration, but then my mom would be rushing to answer the phone. So uh, um, yeah. I won't. Yeah. Tell her to oh, answer cool. the train. <laughs> answer the train. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Excellent. This, is, this is dad. This is dad's uh, kind of messy desk. Um, um, it is what it is. Um. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Yep. All right. Do uh, Mike? Uh, do you have audio yet? Or oh, he's he's off now. Uh oh. Wait. Yeah. All right. Uh, who's next? Who has something to show? Show and tell. Yeah, yes. show and tell. I have a little show and tell. Well, let's All see. right. It's sort of typewriter adjacent, right? <laughs> yes. So I found an old uh, cart. An AV oh. cart. An AV yeah. cart yeah. works and, as my uh, oh, typewriter wow. workstation. So oh, wow. stay, and uh, instead of using my kitchen counter and making a mess on it, now I have I a like typewriter it. workstation. I can keep That's... my tools underneath. Um, so I'm obviously working on an electric typewriter. Yeah, Ted was kind enough to send me some of these coronamatic cartridges. Yay. Oh, nice. got them working Ted to about, the rescue. Yeah, it's happening. Yeah. And then I realized <laughs> my typewriter is not working well because these things ah, belts. Belts are all bent ah. and stretched out. Go to the so, hardware store, the plumbing department, and you can yeah. get new round and O-rings. Thank you, Joe. Yeah, sure. of your video and somebody <laughs> else's video, I was able to, uh, I think it was the Phoenix typewriter. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. A couple yeah. of videos, I found the O-rings that will work as belts at Lowe's. And well, Depot. so they're pretty look, easy to find. I look locally. forward to a video of you showing us that typewriter working. Then change the belt. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, and then the last typewriter of the year was uh, of 2020. <laughs> was basically another surprise, surprise. Another royal. Another no, not royal, not, royal. not brother. Close. Corona. 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 So I got of course, the, for, the for 2020. Oh, for 2020, yeah. Is this a startling? It's just a clipper. Just a clipper, a clipper. okay. A yeah. clipper. I, I found it locally. It was only 30 bucks. So oh, it's nice. And it's a, a, it's it's a nice gorgeously piece. bright gray color. <laughs> exactly what you were talking about earlier. Yeah. <laughs> it's 1949, so it's got the yep. metal. Oh, the nice. Nice. Wow. Yeah. You know, I just wanted to try it because there's no paper bail. I thought there's no way you can type without a paper bail, but I was surprised. The paper it has the paper fingers, fingers. yeah, actually yeah. work pretty well, and it's they a do. very nice typewriter. It's very simple. All you need, no tabs or anything like that. And now it doesn't have the quick release platen, right? I, no, I believe that you have to disassemble. But the platen, yeah. I'm surprised, is pretty nice. You know, if you put two or three sheets of paper, it types pretty well. So even at the lowest end. These are still great machines. Yeah, right. Uh, and I looked at the price in 1949. It was $74.50, which wow. would oh, wow. about 800 and something today. Wow. So these were cheap. <laughs> you know, they were lower end, but they still weren't cheap machines. Made well. Yeah, so you could put it on eBay for eight hundred dollars now. <laughs> <laughs> you could. And you Have you looked at, at prices for typewriters on eBay recently? They're nuts. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's nuts. Yeah. Well, it's because they're becoming more popular. You know, people like me keep yeah. coming along and snatching them up right from under you. Jack it's probably my fault. Right. It's my fault, probably. For all the videos I make. All the videos. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's mostly You're an Joe. enabler, Joe. Yeah. Right. It's mostly yeah. Joe's fault. It is. I'll take I'll take the blame. <laughs> and Ted with that blasted typewriter database. Oh, I know. Oh, yeah. right. What did I do this time? <laughs> this time. It's, it's too much information. It's not good for people. Another no. show and tell. I just discovered erasable bond paper. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Some vintage erasable bond paper. Mm -hmm. you know, hello. Thank you, eBay. And Some people hate that works. stuff. Uh, I was shocked. You can just literally take a pencil eraser mm -hmm. and it just wipes away. Yeah, I was impressed yeah. at how well erasable bond works. So. Yeah. You know, um, I got a typewriter I was taking apart to clean out the other day. It's that uh, mm -hmm. um, Royal... Um, Oh, what's it called? It's it's the electric one that's really quiet. Oh, the Apollo. Yeah. Um, ah. I, I I took that thing apart in the bottom of the case. There's 
you know, a quarter pound of uh, erasable bond shavings. <laughs> oh, that's it's, right. I never opened not, that one up. So. It's not pink eraser stuff. It's just it's like white oh, no. old stuff that's been gotten off of a, a piece of paper with that. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> that's the thing about that erasable bond. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I I cleaned out a crap ton of uh, uh, yeah. pink eraser shavings from from a couple of the typewriters that I that I have. <laughs> Took mm. me a really long time. <laughs> Yeah, they, they can get kind of gluey. Right. Yeah, they just like stick like to the chemistry changes everything. Yeah. And it turns yeah. Into yeah. Bond, later. erasable bond. <laughs> 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 yes, exactly. <laughs> nice tie in. Sorry. <laughs> nice nice callback. Can I, can I ask everyone a question? Yeah. yeah. Is that okay. Um, yeah. Yes. So I come from the music industry. Uh, for many years, I had a guitar and amp repair shop here in town, and it got to be quite large, actually. Now that I owned a very large guitar and uh, amplifier repair shop. Guitar and amplifier repair is probably similar to typewriters, only more popular because more people want to be rock stars than they want to be... Uh, uh, <laughs> Writers. Yeah. yeah. Type um, stars? Type stars? Type stars. <laughs> uh, I, I love that. That's right. Uh, so the big thing that I would always have a lot of fun with, it took me many years to understand that there are people who collect guitars mm -hmm. who do not play them or do not oh, play yeah. them. Um, Those guys. Yeah, there, there are some big ones. I think that falls over. It's so funny if you talk about like classic cars, guys will collect classic cars, but everyone, we expect everyone knows how to drive in today's day and age. Mm -hmm. But with guitars, they would not always know how to play them or play them very well. And so I would repair the guitar, set them up for them, and they'd go, oh, can you play it for me? And that was always one of my big knacks. Uh, I'm very good at, well, I, I know how to play guitar. If someone <laughs> wanted their guitar to play like Eddie Van Halen's guitar, I could play some Eddie Van Halen licks and they'd go, oh, well, that's great. Yeah, I'll, I'll take that. Mm -hmm. I noticed with typewriters, I put out um, a quest, a question I think a month or two ago, and you were all very kind in responding. And how did you learn to type? There's a lot of people who love typewriters who who chicken peck. And then yeah, yeah. I, I thought it was horrific. <laughs> like it was the same thing as guitar playing all over again. Gregory, uh, Mr. Poor Type <laughs> chicken peck. And I thought, <coughs> all right, raise your hands, all the right. chicken peckers. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> There's a majority. This seems to be the comprehensive yeah. theme. Yeah. Like nobody I'm a touch typist from way back. Yeah. So Brian, I try to touch type on Smith Premier typewriters. Oh. Uh, <laughs> in all caps. <laughs> I, I think that's the general. How about you, Eric? You're 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 our new. Yeah, I I've actually I'm actually a pretty pretty fast uh, typer. I uh, I always enjoyed typing and uh i mean i, I took a type typing class in a uh, high school but wasn't taught on typewriters it was taught on just regular uh computers but um but i've always enjoyed typing and uh, the only the only typewriter that i have in my collection that i i do chicken peck on is uh my olympia sm3 um it seems like no matter no matter what touch setting it's on the keys are always they're kind of difficult to to push down and and because they're so spaced apart I find that if I try to touch type, my fingers just get jammed in between the keys. Ah. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. but yeah. Do you think that's something you can work yourself out of with practice or do, do you suspect you'll be chicken pecking on it for quite a while? <laughs> on my SM3? Um, I think, I think it's just, it's just not, it's just not as comfortable to, to uh, touch type on. I don't know how well this is going to be to see, but. I just yeah. find that the, just uh, the height of the keys, uh, yeah. like the spacing between them, like I find that there's just so much space that like my fingers will just kind of like hmm. fall through and they'll get kind of yeah. stuck. So yeah. I find that I have to be a little bit more um, careful with with it. And so I just kind of do like, maybe like what Joe does with like the two the two fingers, but yeah. all my other typewriters, I, I, can, I can type normally. And I think, Joe, you were talking about your pinkies not having enough strength or not being comfortable. Yeah, I, yeah. I think it's my, I'm dominantly right-handed. And so 
it's always the letter A that I miss strike on the left because it's, you know, it's the third most frequent letter in English, but it's being typed with the weakest finger of the weakest hand. Oh. And so I typically miss strike it. Um, some typewriters, it's less problematic than others. Like, uh, I think the Voss that I have is pretty good because the uh, shift lock is far enough away from the A key that you don't miss hit it. Sometimes I will roll my pinky on the A key and, it, and you end up hitting the shift lock a little bit. And some typewriters, the shift lock encroaches onto the A key really close wow. and others it doesn't. And so, yeah, and plus I think there's a natural little curve to my pinky, my left pinky that kind of makes it more so I kind of ro rotate my hand rather than doing striking it directly down. So for that reason, I typically like touch type with my right hand and sort of hunt and peck with my left. Oh, but, wow. <laughs> but I can, I, I can type on a computer keyboard really fast. It's just that to get a good consistent imprint on a manual, I will do that weird typing technique on a type bar electric however i can fly yeah because the, the amount of force required is very light well yeah. i i really do appreciate the insight i wouldn't uh monk you said you're a pecker you're a finger i am totally a hunting pecker no. always have been <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> always I have been there's anything wrong with that <laughs> well i mean uh, it's sort of forefinger with a thumb yeah yeah sort of uh typing style so okay a little modified so it works it's not like guitar pass. everybody plays a little differently so nice. mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> well that's true and i always have to remember the guy who opened up woodstock was richie haven and that guy just played with his thumb he didn't even use his fingers oh yeah. wow so that that's what i always go back to i'll tell you as a uh weirdo that i am i, I was i took typing in high school I was okay, but I had some bad finger positioning uh, as far as touch typing. And I also looked at the keyboard until a few years ago. And I thought, I, I, th I'm wasting a lot of time, effort, energy, and money. I need to really get good at touch typing. So I've gotten really good at touch typing. And I think there's a lot to that. I've had people just sit and say, can I just sit and watch you type for half an hour while I enjoy my coffee? because I'm not, <laughs> I'm not looking at the keyboard. I'm looking at what I'm typing. You know, I don't have to look at the keyboard and I'm only doing 30 or 40 words a minute. And I've put a, a bunch of time and effort and energy into getting as good as I can be at touch typing. And I don't need to be fast as far as that. I need to be efficient. Um, so I'm, but I am left-handed. I, I like how Joe said, you know, yeah. the pinky uh, on a, on a, when I'm playing guitar, uh, all, all the fingers on the left hand are very important. So I think there's a lot of insight to that when it comes to how people type and, and what they're doing. I'm very excited. I've collected a lot of learn to type books, how to type books, and not two of them are not too many of them are very comprehensive. I'm looking at it from a musician's point of view. Uh, when I learned to play guitar, uh, the techniques I use to learn to play guitar. Uh, very different than when it comes to typing. Mm. Now, that being said, maybe musicians have uh, more of the, you know, right brain creative, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but I, I think there's, I think there's a lot to be done there. Um, I'm, I'm very excited to, um, you know, have, have fun with that and how, how we can teach people to type. I'm very fortunate to have a family next door with four children and they're all the way from 23 down to three so the three-year-old i've talked to the mom uh she's she's let me talk to the kids obviously i've given them it's a house full of girls i've given them typewriters so all these teenage girls mm -hmm. you know and the little girl they're all sitting around <laughs> typing. but I, and i've got a very small keyboard i got that uh, i gave to the three-year-old uh so she's having fun i've got her on typing club but anyways i, I think <laughs> typing is something we don't learn as a society anymore in the ways we should i like that eric uh, mentioned that he took typing. Uh, Eric might be, uh, you're, you're, you're 30 maybe, Eric. How old are you? Do you mind if I... Yeah, uh, 28. 28, right. So that's a totally different generation than most of us are, are used to. I'm glad they still offer typing. Obviously, I took typing in high school. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> period after lunch, my senior year was my own. I didn't take it seriously, unfortunately. I wish I would have. So I, I think there's a lot to that. The other thing that confuses people is instead of the keyboard going bottom left to top right like we're used to uh 
photography, uh, picture, you know, writing, we write left to right. It goes bottom right to top left. And I think that can really confuse the brain. So I, I think there's a, there's a lot to that. It's not perfect, but it's a system that we can definitely, I, I know I definitely have a lot of fun with. And I wish there were more comprehensive manuals on learn to type. Does anyone, I'm going to switch gears for a minute, if I may, does anyone have a really good comprehensive manual on how to use all the buttons on a typewriter? Like the difference huh. between a magic margin or a set margin or? No. no. <laughs> I think some of the classic typing instruction books prior to World War II and just after World War II mentioned some of the popular office brands of American typewriters like Smith Coronas and Royals and Underwoods. But, you know, there's a lot of differences in the way different brands worked, you know, and that's a good question. It might almost be a, a, an interesting book for someone to write. Hint, hint, <laughs> Bob, <laughs> maybe uh, come up with a short instructional. A huh? I was looking over a monk. Yeah. Well, yeah, oh. he's the guy. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, there's 20th century typewriting. I don't know if you've, uh, I mean, there's that lasted for decades and decades. So there's many, many different volumes. Um, have you picked up one of those? It seems like any typist would find one in a thrift store, basically just from being in a thrift store because they're everywhere. Right. I haven't heard of that one yet. No. Okay. Yeah. P look for 20th century typewriting. Hmm. Uh, I forget who writes it, but uh, who wrote it, but it was, it was, I around think it's for... Southwestern company. I yeah, have a couple of those. It's, it's decades. They ran for decades and decades and, and it's about the most comprehensive I think you'll find. Okay. Got it. I just found it. That's great. And, okay. and so for like pre-war typewriters, if you go to YouTube, there's a couple of Navy instructional videos, films <laughs> on typing that are really fun to watch. Uh, oh, yeah. on, the, on the efficient use of typing, like things about how to drop the paper in the carriage and spin it and load it up real fast and think, <laughs> tricks like that, you know, <laughs> well, or even how to, how to put a second page behind the first one before the first one's done so you can keep typing and not oh, stop. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think, I think there's a lot to that. I, I agree. That's a good one. And I do refer that. I've just... You know, we've got guitar teachers, uh, violin teachers, all the, do we need typing teachers in the future on how to use typewriters? Who knows? Well, maybe. Bob, you raise a good question, I think, because a lot of us typewriter aficionados are sort of more into the, the, the machine itself as a mechanical object and, you know, a, a, a tinkerer's thing or a collector's thing, but actually the usage of it is a very interesting point, right? Becoming good touch typists on a manual typewriter is for sure a uh a long lost skill to a lot of people right and i so. use it no differently than an acoustic guitar and an electric guitar that's how i look at it mm -hmm. the difference between mm -hmm. electric typewriter manual type, and obviously the modern keyboard mm -hmm. helps them with a computer so i, I they're that's all a good analogy yeah that yeah thank you that, that's how i have to look at it and and boy i can really play an acoustic guitar uh, just like I can play an, an acoustic mandolin. I mean, these are my favorite instruments. <laughs> so I would encourage you to go to um, uh, my uh, blog that I just uh, created this past week, um, because one of the articles I wrote um, was talking about the feel of a typewriter versus a guitar um, and, and like you get your guitar set up for things like, you know, the nut height, the saddle height, the, you know, the action of the strings, but then different typewriters have the, the, the different, uh, feel to the keystroke, the amount of key travel. And, uh, so you might find that interesting. It's, it's funny that you had mentioned all this, cause I was just thinking about it all I last week. That this morning. <laughs> Yeah, oh, it's cool. totally like same wavelength, same wavelength. But I <laughs> yeah. was just thinking yesterday how similar it is to sit down with a typewriter and it just, it like hit me. This is so much like playing music because I used to play the flute like a long time ago. Yeah. And I'm like, this just reminds me of sitting down with your instrument and putting it together and like warming up and getting everything yeah. just ready to go. And I'm like, oh, it's so, it's just nice to Get kind of step back on. into that mentality, Aww. totally, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's awesome. I see Mike <laughs> has his uh, microphone on now. Yeah, welcome, Mike. 
Hi. Thank you. I was curious about the Hello. book you were holding up. I was having a fight with technology. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's these Bluetooth thingies, you know? Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, I do appreciate all the insight, guys. I I've been having a lot of fun with this lately, uh, doing a lot of outlines on what it takes to get the younger generation typing. Lucky for us, there are people like Eric. I, I apologize for, for singling you out. You're just the youngest person. <laughs> Other than Andy and May, but, um, I, I appreciate you letting me single you out. I think there's, there's going to be a lot of people who want to learn to use manual typewriters in the future, and they're just not going to have the avenue to do it. So it, it'll, no, be, you're right. it, it'll be neat what kind of videos are available. It'll be neat what kind of videos Joe makes, what kind of books Ted writes. These are exciting things. So, I, well, this is this conversation is getting archived on YouTube, so they'll, they'll be watching this video to find out about it. That's right. <laughs> it's something I've never really thought about, to be honest. It's really interesting that you would bring it up. You know, it's like if I had to describe myself, it would be a touch typist. I just don't always touch the right keys. You know, <laughs> I, but I took typing classes in high school. And, and I just kind of take that for granted now, you know, I've been yeah. a touch typist my entire life and, and I've just never, the thoughts never crossed my mind that, uh, I mean, I've thought about the fact that there's not typing classes anymore, but if somebody sits down to the typewriter, do they think, how do I go about this the right yeah. way? Or yeah. so, so it's pretty fascinating that you would actually bring up the, the question to begin with. Well, I'm very fortunate working in the pools of, of people that I do, uh, you know, the cube pools, for lack of a better term. And I walk by and they're all extremely proficient typists. There's no hunt and peck. They've been hired because they can use a typewriter extremely well. Uh, they're, they, they compare each other on it. Uh, and it's not always who can type fastest, but who can type better. So wouldn't it be great, uh, too, if there was something they could, you know, do you go back to tap in school at that point so you can outdo your coworker and looking good sitting down at a machine? I, I don't know. In the musician world, the answer would be yes, absolutely. You better look good <laughs> playing the guitar and the proof's in the pudding. You better <laughs> well, I, it, it reminds me of, yeah, it reminds me of the, uh, the Japanese culture with their Soroban abacus, and they have different ratings of proficiency uh like nine different dans or whatever dans or whatever they call them of levels of speed of use so they're very competitive you know in their culture with regards to proficient things like that and it, it, i don't know i don't know if too many typewriter groups around the u.s that have um speed contests i know some type ins have done speed contests the ones that we've held haven't, and I think the ones in Phoenix, I don't remember seeing any speed contests there. But back east, uh, maybe the Philadelphia type ins, where they started at type ins, they did some speed typing contests. So, but and I, I know how you, yeah, but, how do, you, do they have speed sewing contests as well? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they do speed typing contests at Herman's uh, every yeah. year. Yeah, and, yeah. and they have they have two categories. Uh, they have one for the, um, I don't know if they call it modern or post-war or what. Then you have the antique typewriter group. So you've got uh, two hmm. two groups of yeah. uh, speed typers. <laughs> yeah. So I was going to mention, Emily mentioned earlier about she was a, a flautist and, and would, would would have to warm up the, you know, playing the flute. And it reminds me that a few weeks ago, I was over at my friend Kevin's and we were sitting out on the front porch and it was the afternoon. So we had the bright sun and it was nice and warm. We were typing. And then the sun starts to set behind some trees and some clouds set in and it gets really cold quick and the machine starts to get cold, you know, and I don't know if you guys have tried typing in the cold, like real cold, like down in the twenties and, you know, we don't below freezing it. yeah but it, it's interesting you'll start to get mechanical problems if you have issues uh, with with a little bit of leftover lubricants that aren't quite you know fresh or new or whatever and uh, sometimes the typewriter starts to act up um which reminds it, me of yeah go ahead gregory good does the typewriter shiver 
<laughs> it shivers. That's right. You know, sometimes yeah, it'll, no, it'll do is, weird things. Is the like typewriter the machine or is the typewriter the person? Uh, yes. The typewriter person it's, would definitely well, shiver. Even, well, sounds like a philosophical question. <laughs> yes. Even, yes. Uh, <laughs> even bundled up properly. No, I, I think I've seen like escapements will start to sometimes slow down. You know, you get a little bit of piling on of letters, mm -hmm. something like that. Um, and it reminds me that there used to be an old urban legend that the, the old Soviet era uh, rangefinder cameras that, that were like the, co the copies of old Leicas. If you remember that whole thing where after World War II, when East Germany went into the Soviet sphere, they took those, the, Earl, the Leica factory and moved it, uh, uh, you know, across the Ural Mountains. But those old cameras were supposedly lubricated with whale oil and mm. on, on purpose because they wouldn't freeze and they would operate in the cold. And, and now I'm thinking we need fish oil lubricants for typewriters. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> they would stink we'll though. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cod liver. What's that smell? That's my cod liver <laughs> typewriter. Lubricant. That's all I need to add to the typewriter. I just bought. I right. have uh, yeah. smoke and fish. I know. And, yeah. <laughs> smoke well, maybe fish. that would be a good combination. <laughs> <Yeah>. Smoke salmon. <laughs> but it sounds like a good research project I should do this winter is maybe try to lubricate a typewriter with fish oil and see what happens. Interesting. Yeah, yeah the <laughs> Japanese use it in their motorcycles for the fork oil. They use fish oil for similar. Oh, yeah. and boy, it stinks after. After five or ten years, <laughs> to replace the fork. Oh, it's horrific, but it works extremely well for the first ten years. So, yeah, it. they make it happen. Fish oil I, plus nicotine. Yeah, yeah. I had a Suzuki Intruder 800, and I think the forks were lubricated with fish oil. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. You'll know. Yeah, they. When I have to change them out, yeah, it's a it's a smelly smelly process. I have to do it outside. Mm. Uh, I like it when my typewriters don't smell bad and I just use them where it's warm. So Yeah. <laughs> well, the yeah. problem that Kevin and I have is we like to smoke cigars when we're typing. So in the wintertime, yeah. it gets challenging. You have to do that in the <laughs> noontime when the sun is out, not freezing cold in the evening. You should well, get, you one, of those, right, yeah. you should get right. one of those uh, outdoor heat lamps. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I keep telling you guys about the high desert, but... It was like 15 degrees last night, you know. Yeah, that probably wouldn't. Help. And it's it's going to get up to about 50 today, so the thermometer wow. constantly moves, <laughs> depending yeah. on if you're in the sun, it's warm. If you're not in the sun, it's cold, you know. Yeah. But, uh, temperature tends to be whatever it tends to be in the desert. Yeah. Don't, don't hold anything. No, yeah. and then the air with a, a mile elevation, the air is thin and dry, and there's nothing yeah. keeping the heat in. It just radiates off to space overnight. Yeah. Well, I really look forward to watching that video, Joe, because, yeah, it's going to freeze on me on the back of my motorcycles, and I have to <laughs> get them going again before I can use them. So, yeah. <laughs> that'll be neat. Uh, now, Brian, um, I, I, I saw you. It looked like you were shuffling through something. Yeah. I think you want to show something. Uh, thank you. I was, uh, um, on the previous topic, I have a very nice uh, typewriter manual for learning typewriting. Oh. Uh, let's see if you can see that. Well, I'm not. The only problem is it's all in Hungarian. Uh. <laughs> it's really cool. Oh, and you can read Hungarian? No. I can oh. Lots of nice pictures. Mm -hmm. um, I, doesn't, uh, doesn't Google have an app where you can like take a picture and it'll translate it for you? I think yeah, they do. But uh, a lot of these are specialized kind of typewriter terms. They, they don't, That's true. Uh, That's true. Call them, uh, well, my... Uh, my Triumph Norm 6 is a German Hungarian keyboard. Ah. Uh -huh. Yeah. So you had to sit up straight at your desk and. Uh, <laughs> there's lots of hand exercises in here, too. Nice. Ergonomics. Yeah. So the hand exercises you, sound really cool. This one's explaining how to use your margin release. Nice. Oh, right? We need to get that thing translated. <laughs> yeah. I've, I've done little bits of it, and but yeah. you, you kind of go over the same area ten times for twenty minutes, and then you're like, "Oh, it says hit, hit the carriage return." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> by afternoon. So, but it's interesting. I like some of these are pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. Thank you, yeah. Thanks for sharing that.
What was my uh, what was my question? If there are sewing competitions, Emily, do you have a sewing machine behind you? I do. Yes. You have, have you ever been to a sewing competition on who can sew fastest? The only time I remember seeing a sewing competition was in that movie Three Amigos, where Steve Martin was working real hard to get the women to sew. But oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I've never been to a sewing competition, but I have been to like craft nights where people gather and bring their machines and work on whatever project they're working on. Do Is it competitive at all? Uh, it, we we keep it friendly. <laughs> <laughs> nice. There are needles around. You better keep it friendly. Right. <laughs> right. Right. Very sharp scissors. You, you find yourself <laughs> impressed how other people, what technique other people use uh, in sewing, uh, whether it be by hand or with machine. I mean, there's a bit of- There is, yeah, there's a lot. Actually, before I got into typewriters, I was into sewing. So I was reading lots of sewing blogs and working on different projects. And I'd made a few things like handbags and pajamas and costumes. So um, they're, I mean, they're very mechanical too. They're actually, yeah. you can, yeah. I've never taken them apart like completely apart, but I have um, opened them up a little bit to oil them and clean them, um, change the light bulb. But I, I haven't made anything for a while. Actually, that's something, that's one of my New Year's resolutions, I would say, is uh. to get, get them out, get it set up somewhere so I can make some stuff. And um, yeah. That's well, you're, you're distracted by typewriters. <laughs> I am. I am. Yeah. We need more typewriter wish... covers in this world. That's what we need. Typewriter covers. Ah, yeah. there you go. Oh, that's Two a great worlds. idea. Two so, worlds. Emily, yeah. I have a question for you. If I was going to look for an, for a uh, basic sewing machine in a thrift store, what would be a good mm -hmm. brand to look for that would be fairly reliable? Um, I don't know if I have a great answer for that. Or would I mean, it be better to buy a, a low-end new type, a new uh, sewing machine from a craft store, you know, like a Brother or something like that, or Bernina or whatever? I don't know what brands there are. Yeah, I don't know. I think if I were, if I had to give you advice, I would say maybe just go for a newer one because there's so many different models. You can get really yeah. fancy ones, but you can get really basic ones too that'll just get you started if you're really interested. Well, I have a couple photography projects where I, I want to make some arm sleeves for uh, Afghan box cameras, and uh, oh, it would be nice, okay. it would be convenient to be able to just sew those up myself, you know. Yeah, you could always hand stitch them. Well, that's true. Or I could just <laughs> buy a cheap windbreaker jacket and cut the sleeves off. <laughs> there you but, go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Find one at the thrift store. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, it always amazes me how different machines do do different things. Uh, we, you know, we we've had a girlfriend come over to sew things, and she brings three machines, and we're like, what? "Oh, like, huh? yeah, she needs three machines to um, do a, a, a cover for something for the RV, or uh, you know, one." And I, I had no clue that it took so much. She, and she's explaining it to me. Well, this one has this jig in it so when you feed it in it turns it over and this one does has no jig and this other yeah. one is bigger to get through this material i, I mean it, it just amazes me how much there is to sewing I, lucky i reckon it's the same with with typing if you wanted to type a book you would need a 12 inch carriage machine to do that that type, on a standard eight and a half by 11 piece of paper for example i, I don't know but yeah right that's, no that's true that's a good point there are a lot of varieties of sewing machines that do different things and then the same thing with typewriters the more i've gotten into them the more i've i've found just how fascinating it is that they're so different there's so many different kinds yeah, uh, yeah, yeah we, we definitely see a lot of sewing in our society compared to typewriter machines i mean yeah. just just sewing arms you know because our bodies are so funky uh, <laughs> so much, so, it always fascinates me I, I end up yeah. just doing a ton of stuff by hand because I, I don't have I don't have a machine either, Joe, a sewing machine. Uh, luckily, I, I I have a friend who who sews, so she'll come over and sew stuff. But it's definitely, uh, yeah, it, it's a whole other art. Anyways, thanks for sharing, Emily. We were just comparing yeah. music, yeah. so I thought I, I thought sewing machines would be a really good comparison. Yeah. I, I, I think yeah, I, like uh, your, I, I like the historical uh, crossover with uh, sewing machines and typewriters too. Uh, both in uh, the the brother machines, of course, brother me, yes. me both. Um, yeah. Cole Steel or they mm -hmm. made those 
was that made industrial sewing machines and then they made typewriters and then they went back to making sewing machines. So, okay. hmm. huh. I, so I thinking, it's, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, no, I, I was done. <laughs> I, I was just going to mention it, it. It's, it's funny because I just, uh, the other week I had written to my, I write my mom like on a weekly basis now. And, uh, uh, I was explaining to her about the, the facet typewriter that I bought. It reminded me of the sewing machine she had when I was a kid, which was called a Elna. Um, mm. It was made in Switzerland. And the funny thing is I remembered the logo for it, like the, uh, the, 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 the styling of the logo. It was, it was kind of like um, it would explain why I ended up making the switch from engineering to graphic designer <laughs> later on in my mm. career. Um, but the similarities in, in the, the machines um, and the way they, they look um, okay. was, was, was kind of interesting. Um, and then uh, there's a place down the street from me uh -huh. um, called Langlet's Leathers that makes uh, these really nice uh, motorcycle uh, jackets and pants. And they, they have the machines that they have in there. I've been in and, and, um, and toured around in the place and, and uh, it's pretty amazing. Everything in there is old, you know, and heavy duty. It reminds me a lot of just like, you know, typewriters. Uh, I don't know uh, what today's modern sewing machines are like, but some of these older industrial machines are, they're real beasts, you know? <laughs> yes. Yeah. To be able to take like layers of leather that it, the needle has to pierce through all of that. It's got to have a pretty powerful motor, leather or denim to make jeans. It's got to be pretty powerful. I don't have anything yeah. that can do that. <laughs> yeah. I think I saw a video a couple years ago of some artisanal small batch denim uh, company that are using these ancient, uh, like mid 20th century industrial sewing machines. And you, they're using high end uh, Japanese denim to make, you know, small batch jeans that are pricey, hmm. very pricey. So, That's so speaking of old one machines, pair of jeans could buy you a lot of typewriters. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of old machines, um, I once saw, and I am going to just kick myself for not at least taking a picture of it, uh, but I felt awkward at the time. I would be more comfortable doing it now. I came across a Woodstock machine from, it had to be from the 20s, like 1920s. And it was an electric machine. It plugged in and switched oh, wow. on. It didn't function. I, the guy that was uh, running the machine, uh, running the uh, sale, he had a generator for like the power tools so people could test the power tools. So he fired up the generator and plugged in the machine trying to turn it on, but it, it wouldn't come on. But I just thought that is such a strange creature to see just <laughs> such an ancient thing yeah. and have it be electric. I wish I would have taken a picture. It was wild. Yeah. They're worth a few <laughs> dollars today. I've never seen one operate, but I've seen them for sale. There's another guy a few months ago who got one and was looking for parts to rebuild it on one of the Facebook pages. But yeah, that, that's pretty exciting. Whatever they can do to assist, I, I don't know, make it happen. Although electricity yeah. was a new and exciting thing back then, so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a little bit too exciting yeah. at times. <laughs> yeah, it seemed kind of scary, actually. I was worried that he even plugged it in, but, um, but yeah, it was neat. So I, this I almost reminds... wish I would have bought it, but. <laughs> yeah, this reminds me of a conversation that my friend Kevin and I have had repeatedly, and it involves taking an a, a IBM Selectric machine which if you know, is basically a mechanical typewriter powered by an electric motor that turns a spindle. And um, we were thinking about making it mechanically powered from something other than a motor. And one of the initial ideas we had was to power from a Victrola wind-up spring motor, have a wind-up <laughs> typewriter. We realized at the time though that it wouldn't provide enough torque for a long enough period of time to really get any typing out of it. But uh, we think something like a treadle powered typewriter, like if you could get one of those old white sewing machines with a treadle and 
and put the selector chassis into it uh, <laughs> and then <laughs> run run the flywheel onto the spindle with a belt with a leather belt or rubber belt you could actually treble power a selectric by just mechanically huh. you need 60 rotations per minute or you're not going to get it to index well you, you just have to uh, gear it up right you have to have a the heavy <laughs> foot there is a story yeah. of a of a guy in Amish territory who got his uh thing running with uh, a bicycle oh he went on a bicycle <laughs> oh wow a treadle that uh that powered his his selectric i don't know why he picked a selectric if he's a if he's amish but uh he came up with a way to do it <laughs> well he was going in the modern world he's he's a modern amish the, the problem is you need you need to have like a gearing ratio that, yeah. that keeps it at that exact rotation otherwise it just messes up the the mechanism like uh, a 10 speed or something yeah. <laughs> joe i'm looking for a video where you're setting up by a river now with the small scale mill yeah, exactly. mill yeah. <laughs> we actually thought of that too having a, a water wheel powered a selector <laughs> well you need a governor like one of those ball governors that a steam engine used right mm -hmm. the centrifugal oh, yeah. ball governor you need something like that a flywheel or something yeah flywheel yeah, tremendous yeah. amount of equipment and engineering to make a selectric work it would be, yeah. He's actually going to have um, hand-carved uh, tight balls, too. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. There you go. There you go. <laughs> I'll just be doing finger exercises and keeping my fingers mus muscular and keeping my dexterity up. That's it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> now, I've been eyeing uh, Emily's typewriter there. Me, too. Do you Which care one? to show that? Have... The one right, um, right uh, Yeah, right next to you. That's a... Yeah. Olympia? This is an SF. SF. Uh, yes. Yeah. That, yeah. We uh, were talking about SFs earlier. I had yeah. to get yes. mine out. That's at the top of my wish list. SF. Um, I don't know if you'll be able to hear it, but it makes a really weird noise. I don't know if this is normal or if this is maybe the carriage the, return. Yeah, you need the. Uh, there's a silencer spring on the uh, escapement that is probably either dislodged or is not there anymore. Okay. Um, and it's kind of a bent wire in a spiral that hooks onto one of the, the <laughs> little things. And um, it's, that's what keeps that uh, from what's happening is the loose dog keeps hitting the, uh, the escapement gear mm -hmm. as, you're, okay. as you're doing the carriage return. And yeah. that spring normally would hold that escapement dog away from the uh, gear when you're doing the carriage return. But it's, okay. it's, it's not mechanically hurting anything. Oh, okay. I was wondering yeah. if it's okay if I use it while it's, it's making that it's fine. Yeah. horrible sound. Yeah. I was it sounds like, really oh, bad. I'm driving in my car. And my car's yeah. making a funny sound. I wonder if I should keep driving. Turn the radio yeah. on. I'm sure it's fine. That's right. Turn the radio I on. I just wanted to, yeah. Yeah, the silencer spring is, is nice to have, but it's not necessary. Okay. It's not, it's not pretty to, to listen to. So no. I'm kind of disappointed but i had have, to get this one out instead of have to um, open it up and and look underneath there and look <laughs> for a little bent spring it's like a, a spiral spring and yeah. see if it's kind of floating oh, around in the bottom spiral. of the machine oh it's not grinding to on anything it. right i'm not sure it's that's beautiful it sounds awful <laughs> It's definitely so. <laughs> a machine I would like to take to have professionally cleaned uh, and restored. Yeah. And that would and be used. worth it. That would be definitely. worth it. So, so yeah. Emily, if you press and hold the carriage release button and then move the carriage, it doesn't make the noise. Okay, right, right, because right. you're you're not actually turning the escapement gear then. Okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, nice Such bell. A cool typewriter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is a good one. <laughs> yeah. You're not hurting anything. No. Okay. Okay. I mean, I don't really, I don't really use them a whole lot. I, I'm a little busy. I'm about to start um, school again with my kids. So today's my last day of freedom. Uh, and then oh. I'll just be. Oh, and you're college. spending it with us. Oh, yeah. nice. <laughs> Thank you. I, I love that type. That type writer is, is one of my favorite. I have an earlier, like a late fifties version, which I love, but that with the two tone. Oh my mm -hmm. goodness. That's definitely yeah. on my wish list. Yeah. Definitely. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. 
Did you have any, anything else you wanted to show or? Um, yes, I have one other typewriter okay. that I'd like to show off. Um, yeah. I'm going to be really, you'll have to forgive me for how fumbly I am with this because I haven't gotten this one out very much. So um, the first thing the top. is the sticker is. Oh, wow. It's an old um, Purdue University seal. They don't use oh. it anymore. And this is like, this is kind of special. Um, well, it's obviously it's special because I went to Purdue. I'm a graduate. Ah. Oh. I have a degree. Nice. <laughs> Alumni. A boilermaker. Yes. I am a boilermaker. <laughs> um, so I had to buy this typewriter. It is a Remington portable mm -hmm. and it's two tone, which is so neat. Oh, that is super cool. Yeah. That is wonderful. Yes. It's oh, wow. open. How unique. It actually yeah. works. Um, I had to get on YouTube and um, figure out how to use it because it's so different than every other typewriter that I have. Like the line space lever functions differently. There's only one um, flatten knob mm -hmm. and I didn't know how mm -hmm. to raise the type bars or anything. So, But now um, you do? I do and yeah. It's, so do it. So it's, it's really <laughs> do it. Okay, so that's the. Yep, you pull the knob out, and then yeah, do the lever. There you oh, go. Oh, wow. nice. Oh. Nice. It's like a peacock. Wow. Interesting. I know. A uh, peacock. <laughs> and it does have a nice bell sound. What typeface does oh. it have on it? Um. I I don't know the term for it. It's like is it like a normal, normal typeface standard. or is it like yeah. a sans serif? It's a normal. It's very pretty. Okay. Let's see. Here, let me grab a piece of paper. He has not read the book, Mr. Penundrum's 24-hour bookstore yet. <laughs> Wait, no. Does anyone know what I'm talking about? No. 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 <laughs> the whole book is all about typeface. It's very exciting. Uh, oh, cool. Oh. Mr. Penundrum's 24 hour bookstore. Very, very talented author. Uh, very, very long, very exciting fictional book. Very novel. <laughs> I ask because uh, those machines are the only ones that have a uh, typeface called Art Gothic on them. Oh. And if you get one of those, it's it's very much like Vogue, Royal Vogue. Oh, nice. So uh, if you did have that, it would be extra special. Yeah, I don't think so. I think it's just normal. Looks like it works well. Yeah. Yeah, it, it really does. It takes it's getting good. used to this line space lever. You have to pull it mm -hmm. towards you yeah. at, and push the carriage over. Wow. Um, I've got one of those I'm rebuilding right now, and it keeps breaking as I dismantle it. And we, you know, oh, it's a but it's a magnet type. That's why I'm putting so much effort and energy into it. It's a magnet type, and so I'm totally excited. You know, uh, so I can actually mm. see them. It'll be unlike Joe. Uh, I'm looking. <laughs> I'm, I'm very excited to see what I'm typing <laughs> without my glasses on. <laughs> So yeah, that's my, that's my share. It's very pretty. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> Can you hold that up to the, well, Can you hold it up the camera? Let's see. The, uh, Let's see. No, the uh, PCR. Oh, the type. Uh, the yeah, balls, it's yeah. not very yeah, yeah. <laughs> Okay. Do Is it pretty light? <laughs> oh yeah, we can see it. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah. Yep. Very nice. nice. I love those old style yeah. numbers. Yes. Yeah. They are really yeah. unique. They're yes. Higher and lower. I guess the mm -hmm. odd numbers are at one level and the even numbers are at another level. Okay. Oh, mine's not like that, but it is, they yeah. are like kind of, they're just kind of fancy. Like the two is extra curly. Yeah. And I like the Y, the loop and the Y is kind of cool. That's it. <laughs> hmm. is, it is there a loop? Maybe a dark. I don't think my Y has okay. a loop. It's got a okay. little sort of tail, but not. Yeah, okay, not tail. A yeah, okay. Yeah, the Q is pretty too. Actually, the Q is very loopy. Yeah, very cool. So, yeah. What an interesting machine. 
It yeah, is Yeah, thank you. It thank you. Definitely smells like an antique. <laughs> oh, that was great. Thank you. All right. Anyone else? Well, I was going to show uh, my favorite typewriter. Yeah. This is one that I found at an antique store um, when I was on vacation in Maine uh, this summer. And I don't think anyone else has uh, shown this particular uh, oh. type. Oh. Royal yeah, it's 65. Very yeah, very and uh, very miniaturized. I, I find that the touch on this uh, machine is really, it's really good uh, compared to the other ones in my collection. And it doesn't have an adjustment or anything, but it seems perfect for, mm -hmm. for the way nice. I type and, and the, uh, the ergonomics of the keys are really great. Um, made in Holland? It, it just, yep. was that? Right. Is it made, yeah, in, made Holland? in Holland? Yeah. And uh, it, it doesn't have a lot of features. It doesn't have the tabs or, you know, anything because it's uh, ultra portable, but, um, but I don't, I don't really use tabs or the, or the uh, yep. magic margins or anything like that anyway. So I find that this is, you know, this is a really good typewriter for me. Mm -hmm. um, I love Royal it's all, Lights. It's all metal body. Nice. Really high quality. Writer's typewriter. So yeah, yeah I've, I've actually got one of those, Eric. Uh, mine is covered in rust. Uh, but it tops, it's, it's it's ugly as can be, but it tops exceptionally well. It also travels real well. Um, yeah, it's it's really light for being an all metal construction. I feel like well, and it doesn't crap out. Uh, I, I mean, yeah. I, I put mine on the back of motorcycles, and every so often they crap out or something breaks, and I don't blame them. Half the motorcycles don't have shocks, so I think it's appropriate if they break. But the Royal that I have does does real well. I take the Skywriter with me most of the time when I travel because I know. That one doesn't have it. But I've taken the, that Royal a few times and yeah, it does real well. And it's nice that it, I think it's because it doesn't have any of the extra features that they try to add onto the machine, yeah. you know, to, to the selling points. Less I things guess. to go wrong. <laughs> Anyways, good for you. That's a really good machine. Yeah, I, I love Pretty those cool little lights. <laughs> Excellent. Funny, all, Thank you for showing that. Out of all the uh, machines that I've, that I've gotten, uh, I, I live in New Hampshire. Um, it seems like every typewriter that I've seen over the past year has been a Royal. So the, other than the Olympia SM3, every, every uh, typewriter I have is, is made by Royal. <laughs> but Where are you yeah, at, New Hampshire? wrong with that? Uh, I'm in uh, the Manchester area. Okay. Oh, okay. My wife has family in Concord. Oh, really? Cool. Yep. Love visiting out there. <laughs> yeah, where, where are we all from? I don't, Monk, where are you from? I don't even know where you live, I don't think. Arizona, right? <laughs> He's, <got this call. laughs> He's in Arizona. He's in uh, Phoenix, uh, Mesa, um, Phoenix, actually itself, Phoenix. I'm in Albuquerque. Uh, Riverside, I'm California. <laughs> yeah, Riverside. Where are you, May? Central Arkansas, Little Rock, Arkansas. Wow, good for you. Yeah. Bill? Uh, Portland, Oregon. Wow, that's great. Uh, your turn, Emily. I'm in Michigan. <laughs> and I am now that she's back. She can tell us where she's from. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm in southwestern Illinois, but St. Louis, Missouri is the largest nearby city. Ah, uh, okay. Excellent. That's right. I like how you said Missouri. My mom's family is from Missouri. We say Missouri. Missouri. Yeah, <laughs> but I've learned that most people now say Missouri. Yeah. Misery, yes, yeah. misery. <laughs> More. I was going to ask Eric if um, what kind of uh, typeface he likes. If he likes the uh, Elite or Pika, uh, smaller, larger style typeface. If he's I, there, I prefer. I prefer. Uh, well, I guess it depends on on what I'm trying to type. Um, for something like the one type page uh, blog, I, I find that Pika is usually better because uh, uh, sometimes it, it's it's not easy to fill up an entire page without just kind of rambling. But, um, yeah. but in general, I think I think I like uh, Elite. Um, I have a uh, that's actually the first typewriter that I that I bought was um, the Royal KMM, and that has uh, uh, that I really like. Yeah, nice. I I kind of like Elite also, uh, but you're right. It's it's uh, when you when you're scanning or photographing a type page, it, it, the Elite is a little harder to read unless you have a good 
crisp imprint. And if you photograph it close up, you know, to get a little bit better image. Yeah. So uh, I was I was recently uh, responding. Uh, Diane Mayer and I are are pen pals, and I was recently re replying to one of her her old letters, and she she was using seventeen characters per inch. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I got a letter from her in that, for that in that typeface. <laughs> Yeah, you need one of those old plastic wow. magnifiers to ship with the letter. Yeah, <laughs> that's Actually, on I, I an have Olympia a... SG One. Oh, oh yeah, machine, yeah, small typeface. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say I have a I have a letter opener that has a uh, a magnifying glass on it, but I guess it wouldn't really do you all that well inside the. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I need a microscope. Yeah, my yeah. eyes. Now, Nay, don't you have a, a machine that has the uh, the six character per inch typeface? I do. Yes. Oh, it's yes. Corona the other end of five it. series. Yes, it's it's a, it's just a regular serif typeface, but yes, six. It's huge. Inch. It's pretty nice. amazing. You know, I accidentally it was the the second uh, vintage typewriter or old second old American vintage typewriter I should mm. say that I got, and I just picked it up. You know, sight oh. unseen for 30 bucks and got it home and started posting we, pictures on Facebook. And I think it was oh, Ted wow. or, or one of you guys pointed out, oh my gosh, you've got yourself something special. Everybody's showing off their magnifying glasses. Yeah. <laughs> Go grab mine. <laughs> That's another thing we all have in common. Uh, yeah. Magnifying glasses. Yeah. Hmm. Let's see, yeah. I've got. <laughs> I'm the odd man I actually, out. I like to pick these up. These are fun. My kids like to play with them. I found yes. uh, a magnifying, it's a page. It's a rectangle, like plastic. Like a Fresno oh, lens? Yeah. Yeah, it's wow. so neat. The kids hold it up in front of their face and then their whole face gets <laughs> distorted. So, so I, have a, I have a story about those. Um, back in the 80s, I used to be a TV repairman and I got a um, 36 inch Fresnel lens. It was from a projection oh. television. Oh. The corner was broken. It, it was replaced under warranty. So it didn't cost the shop anything, but I took the old lens, took it home. I still have it. And in the bright summer sun here in New Mexico, I can start a two by four on fire with it in about oh, cool. less than five seconds, maybe about three seconds. Wow. <laughs> it, it makes about an inch size spot of light that's mm. so bright you can't even look at it. And oh, the dangerous wow. part about it is if you're carrying it outside, you if you're holding it in your hand, like next to you, you have to specifically think to point the edge of the screen toward the sun. You don't want to just carry it like this. Uh, catch yourself on fire. <laughs> you literally. On no, fire. you could literally catch yourself yeah. on fire, burn yeah. yourself oh, badly. But I also uh, wow. like to burn weeds with it. Uh, you put on a <laughs> pair of dark sunglasses so you don't get that spot from your eyes. And I can just go outside and burn weeds. It's just hilarious, you know. <laughs> it's solar That's powered. Wow. Wow. Emily, there's a, there's a lesson for you for your kids. That's right. Yeah. Hang things on fire. How to start a fire. <laughs> don't have them listen to Uncle Joe. Uncle Joe will steer them right. Away. Right. So there's right there's a YouTuber that we like to follow. He does a lot of science experiments in his back. Yeah. I think he's the backyard scientist. Oh, he's a young yeah. guy and he blows stuff up and lights them yeah. on fire and <laughs> plays with hot metal. And so, yeah, we watch a lot of that stuff too. <laughs> yeah, right, right before my dad passed away, he had a huge solar project. Uh, those those Fresnel lenses, I've got like four or five hundred of them. I just have wow. And every every box weighs a hundred pounds or fifty pounds. It's and I just have a shelf of them, and I don't. And I've tried to sell them a few at a time for five dollars on eBay. So, you know, people just aren't buying them. So I haven't mm. figured out what to do with them all. I, and I don't have, I don't have. He he would, he would put them in. Uh, large racks uh that he built and then use um you know piping to cool the uh what's that solar collection technology joe where you collect the solar to, into one uh, yeah like a thermal process where you're heating up a liquid you mean yeah well you you were instead of collecting on a large solar panel I'd collect on the one I, I can't remember the name of it now yeah like a like a pipe or a tube or something maybe i don't but, know well, the piping was just to cool it the bypass oh, okay of, so he set up a few of these huge solar farms in uh you know far off mining camps 
and the byproduct was hot water. And at the end of the day, all the guys working could take a hot shower. So it worked out pretty well, you know. But, yeah. Uh, oh, I can't remember the name of this thermal technology to save my life. Which is, anyways, hundreds of Fresnel lenses all over my freaking house, all over the place. The kids. Well, around like a frisbee. the the well, Air Force base next to Albuquerque, where Sandia Labs is at, and a lot of secret stuff is done there but they have a large solar furnace solar tower a solar power tower with a bunch of mirrors and they do they use it i guess for some kind of ultra high temperature research but if if you're a mechanic working on motorcycles maybe you could put together a bunch of these and make a solar powered uh furnace to melt metal if you want to cast metal parts for uh, <laughs> wow yeah, but, you, know, you could maybe do that so do not reach your hand in here children uh, don't reach your hand in <laughs> that it's was funny really and i've had similar issue with i really like hydrogen so i've i've uh, hydrogen process not hydrogen storage so i've been able to uh, you know produce hydrogen and get uh, small motors going, uh, assist motorcycle engines in going, but that's hard because you got to attach this hydrogen generator to a motorcycle. But it's great to run a a lawnmower engine, you know, off of, mm. off of hydrogen. But you don't see it, and and that's a hard thing. It's amazing how much electricity is in our lives these days, and we know not to touch red and black, uh, or we know not to touch anything that looks like an Edison plug. But <laughs> we don't know hydrogen. We certainly don't know uh, thermal in that regard. It would, it would almost be dangerous. I wouldn't know how to log it, but it, it's a really good idea. I really, if there's not fire, we try to touch it, right? So. Yeah. <laughs> have you tried, uh, Bob, have you tried using uh, ammonia gas in, in an engine? Uh, um, no, no, but I, I, I've seen the concept. It just didn't seem very efficient compared to the hydrogen. Yeah. Gas. It's just easier to get ammonia in a liquid form, and you just it vaporizes at room temperature, right? So you can create, make a gas out of it pretty easy. Anyways, yeah, that would be that would be fun. I'm gonna look into that. I, I haven't touched hydrogen in here, but for several years I was generating hydrogen, and I've had a few things blow up in my face, small things, but nothing big. But <laughs> still, it, it, I, I hope hydrogen is the future, not hydrogen storage, hydrogen generation. Yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah. I understand hydrogen is is can be corrosive to metals, right? And that's one of the problems using it in internal combustion engines. Yeah, 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 big time. Well, it's a water. You got to keep running it. You won't have the ability to stop an engine like we do today. Mm -hmm. you no, know, yeah, we, we can stop our car, leave it for a month, come back, jump the battery. It's going to work. You don't have that option in a hydrogen uh, uh, engine. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's a different it's a different idea in technology. I'd love to get a small motorcycle. I love little motorcycles. You know, I ride them all the time. I'm a big guy on this little motorcycle. <laughs> I, I'd love to get a little motorcycle just to run on hydrogen. And as long as it's moving, in theory, it could run. You know, I'd have a generate. I'd have generators hooked to the chain uh, that generate enough electricity to run itself. But uh, you know that. <laughs> Where, where, where do you stop where do you i'm getting 80 miles to the gallon anyways so why do i need to generate hydrogen to do this so it's kind exactly. of exactly <laughs> for the fun of it yeah uh, science why not science <laughs> <laughs> uh we're really nerding out we should uh, talk about typewriters and... oh bill <laughs> bill check the chat for me would you i wrote you a message mr bill oh okay well, yeah, mr bill like, oh, there's <laughs> a chat bill. thing <laughs> it is oh. uh typewritemosphere.com yeah can you spell that out for us i apologize i didn't t-y-p-e w-r-i-t-e m-o-s-p-h-e-r-e dot com i just pulled it up so that i can look at his uh okay here you are ah. i can just mark this yeah this started um i was in a uh a conversation over on uh, the typewriter talk um, uh, forum. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. It doesn't seem to be very active. Um, it's all on Facebook but, now. <laughs> oh, okay. That, that yeah. kind of leaves me out. <laughs> oh. um, but I was, I was um, uh, discussing the idea of uh, uh, typewriter towns. Like, you know, some towns are not like, I, I, I spent like 11 years in Austin. It's a music town, you know, live music. Right. Um, and so I was thinking about the concept of typewriter towns because 
here in Portland, we have multiple typewriter repair shops. We have places uh, in the metro area where you can go that, you know, you can ha have your choice of typewriters, like the place where I bought my first typewriter, they had like 17 different typewriters to pick from, mm -hmm. um, which seems like kind of a rarity these days, you know. Um, and then uh, pre-pandemic, there were type-ins being uh, held here, um, yep. which I haven't participated in one, but I'd like to someday. Um, so I, I'm thinking Portland is a typewriter town. Well and done. then I was asking about... Um, you know, thinking about what, what's the typewriting atmosphere like where, where other people live. And, and then I just came up with um, typewriter atmosphere without thinking about um, the fact that there's already typosphere. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. but, uh, um, so so I, I, I went ahead and used the, the domain was open and that's just what I picked uh, from my blog, which was probably an unwise choice because it's quite a mouthful and easy to misspell. And uh, <laughs> once somebody like it, has actually. it bookmarked, then, uh, then it's, uh, then it's uh, easy enough, right? I so, like it. Yeah. It sounds like atmosphere, right? Exactly. Type right atmosphere. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. what mm -hmm. I like about it. I like yeah. it too. Trust Thanks. me, you can have a really short name and still have people misspell it. Like uh, <laughs> my domain, <laughs> Ted. people are always like yeah. M-O-N-K. No. <laughs> no, that's not and right. It's, and it's dot org, not dot com. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm familiar okay. with uh, how many times people have misspelled my last name is Guthrie, and I've had everything from Gunther to um, <laughs> uh, Guthrie to you, uh, you you name it. So I you, I get your point, Ted. It's a very good one. Guthroid. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Oh, Portland's Sarah. a hipster town. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning, Good morning Sarah. 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 Hi, Hi, and ladies. <laughs> Good morning. How are you guys doing? We're Good. very Good. How, how are you feeling, Sarah, after your uh, COVID shot? I'm, thank you for asking, Joe. I'm doing really well. The first three days were a little rough, and I think that's kind of what they're finding across the populations. Mm -hmm. um, little soreness, little mild temperature. A lot of headache, just feel like you want to stay in bed, but then you oh. get over it. So yeah. I'm good. Uh, you get a booster. I'm supposed to get a booster on the 20th, which is in three weeks from the original. So um, hmm. I took the Pfizer shot and I was able to get access to it because I work or have worked in a hospital mm -hmm. prior to the pandemic. So all the employees qualify, um, but I've been sort of inactive for a while. So um, anyway. Yeah, I'm very grateful to have access to it. Um, but you know, it's like, it's only the first piece of the puzzle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, did you, it'll, did it'll you, come along. Were you able to get your uh, family inoculated? No. Um, it's only employees and frontline workers. Mm -hmm. And ah, I suppose okay. anybody who's at, at extreme risk, they're going to start rolling out for educators next. But, okay. um, but, you know, I've been working for the past four years at a trauma hospital um, as a transcriptionist, but you know, because it is the, the nature of the hospital. And when I go into work, I go straight through the ER entrance into the mm -hmm. laboratory, you know, into pathology and um, you're exposed to all kinds of sick people. So there is a good justification for it if I go back. But yeah, um, yeah it was my first time back actually at work in seven or eight months that day wow. just to get the shot. And it was mm -hmm. really eye opening to kind of see how things have changed. So yeah, I'm, I'm grateful to have it. Um, I know I'm one of the lucky ones, <laughs> yeah, yeah. but I'm hoping that, you know, because I'm a single mom and I need to work, it will help me get back into the workforce a little bit faster. And that's, there you go. Yeah. that's really a need for me. So I'm grateful. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm a bit sleepy this morning. <laughs> oh. So, so <laughs> that's why I joined a bit late. Um, just kind of have been having some stress related to trying to get back to work and all of that. Mm -hmm. But, um, but really love seeing you guys this morning. And I brought out my Voss because Bill was talking about it, the one that he got. Yep. Yeah. And so, you know, because those Vosses are all metal, Bill, I think you can, you should actually take it out and do a simple green, wash it down um, and then air it out because when I have deep cleaned like an LC Smith or whatever that had tons and tons of cigarette gunk on it, it would just drip off. And I think that the, the, the smell is actually in the smoke saturation in a layer on the machine. And especially if you don't have any um, fabrics lining it, uh, like felt or whatever, 
you're pretty much good to go. You could hose it down very gently, but I think you could spray it down and, and start with that and then, then get your charcoal filters or whatever. But I think it would help. I do. That was wow. a to Bill, by the way. I missed, I missed the front end of that uh, conversation. <laughs> I stepped away at just the wrong moment. Um, and that's unfortunate. <laughs> oh, what, I'm sorry, Bill. How did that get started? You were... So I, I went back and listened to a little bit about what you said about your Voss that you picked up in Salem. Yeah. And by the way, I know that area well. So, but, oh, um, you cool. know, these machines are metal. They're like, they're metal. And so yeah. because they don't have the fabric linings, like this, the sound deadening fabric, at least mine doesn't, um, like in here, metal. Yes. All metal. Like um, I would personally suggest spraying it down with simple green taking it outside and rinsing it off, very carefully drying it. Um, but you can actually wash off a lot of that smoke residue. And that's where I would start for getting rid of that smoke smell because I've had luck in the past um, fixing up, you know, very old machines that had years and years, decades of cigarette smoke saturated into the paint and whatnot. Okay. And, um, but I would start with that. And then I would do the other kinds of me measures, but uh, of course, dry it completely so that it, it doesn't rust. Um, yeah, I've got but, an air compressor. So if I'm careful with yeah, that, I can. Exactly. But I mean, I would say don't be afraid to, you know, because you do have the original paint from what it looks like and it's in really nice condition. I wouldn't worry about the paint chipping off like I would with mine. Mm -hmm. um, I think that if you're gentle and careful, just use some simple green. Don't use anything that can strip the paint and get that puppy wet. And you will see stuff <laughs> slot. You will see like brown water come off of it would be my Interesting. guess. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful machine, by the way. Oh, thank you. Yeah. yeah. It's funny. We were talking about uh, typefaces earlier. And, mm -hmm. and one of the reasons that I'd really like to get it, you know, operable to where I could stand. I mean, it's operable. I just can't stand the smell of it. Um, right. But it, but it has um, the 11 character per inch uh, type mm -hmm. uh, size. That is, yes. is, that's actually my favorite. That's what my first Olympia um, came with. And yeah, uh, I have and this. I, and every time I look at it, I think of Joe and I'm like, oh, I should give it to Joe. I think you should give it to Joe. <laughs> <laughs> See, my I can give you my, I can give you my address right now if you want. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> drive. The world famous Joe Van Cleve at JoeVanCleve.com. That's um, right. <laughs> Well, the thing is, I got, this is the first machine that I got. This was my gateway machine that really got me down the rabbit hole. And I paid way too much for it. So that's kind of why yeah. I don't send it to you. But honestly, every day I look at it and I'm like, oh my God, Joe Van Cleve would love this machine. Because <laughs> it does work and it has the tiny characters. <laughs> but, you know, our typewriter guy would not replace the platen. He said it was too risky uh, to damage the paint. You know, this was repainted by that Tony typewriters in the Netherlands. Oh. And I ordered it from there and I got it for myself as a gift back uh, as a tax return in the beginning of the year. I, I paid like $280 for it. So that's why I'm a little bit nervous about giving it away. Um, is it but, a Quart Z <laughs> keyboard? It is a Quart Z actually, yes. Oh, okay, um, yeah. Yeah, and it's got this, these keys that are like, you know, it's like ivory piano keys, Joe. Mm -hmm. It feels so nice. I mean, You're it selling is it. <laughs> I'm like, oh, it is so nice. Tell, tell me more about the paint job. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. so this is like a, it's like a cherry red. Um, oh, oh, yeah. It does have a little yeah. tiny bit of a scratch there. Yeah. Well, um, we could take a few hundred dollars off for that. <laughs> <laughs> a few hundred. Oh, yeah. And I can tell that it used to be green or maybe that's mm -hmm. just how they used to do things. I'm sure Ted would know better than I. Yeah, that's um, what the underside of my machine looks like. Yeah, that's what I would think. Yours is probably an S. Well, this was an ST24, I believe. I think they have a 21, a 24 and some other thing. Um, mm. and there we go. You like nice. That? Yeah. 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 And then let me show you this. Oh, here we go. The, the ivory logo. Sam, oh, that's like total nice. oh, yes. Oh, uh, uh, ST24. Oh, wow. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and then of course it's got this like absolute butter carriage. I mean, the carriage return is just like, it's so oh, wow. nice. Oh my God. I think it has a nice little bell too. Let's try that. Uh, let's see. 
Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Ding. A fairy bell. And he goes, <laughs> like that. It's got a lot of sustain to it. Okay. It really does. Will Voss <laughs> back to SG24. Whole, uh, I have to go searching for one. SG24. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yep. So nice. this is a lovely, lovely little beast. Um, it's got all the original doodads. I don't know how to do these weird tab set things. Uh, I'm sure oh, yeah. you would. It, you yeah. twist it uh, one way to, I think you twist it towards you to set and away set. from you to clear. And then you mm -hmm. push it in to clear all of them. Oh, thank you. Thank Actually, you, um, what I was mentioning earlier is Joe had put together a video um, on on these machines, and it's mm -hmm. the 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 one in the uh, video is just like the one that um, I ended up with with the little gold wing doors that flip yeah. over for the ribbon oh, access. I'm but very the, jealous the tab now. Set yes. is just the same <laughs> as is what you have there. Um, uh -huh. Right, and, and um, it's kind of unique. Yeah, that was actually Kevin's typewriter. That's, was it? Yeah, mine. Well, of course, we I, have this. Yeah, oh yeah. This little thing. That's right. I like those Olympia style paper supports. Yeah. They're real practical. Yeah. yeah I remember seeing your video. I think it was with Kevin um, yeah. showing his, and oh my goodness, what a great machine! And of course, the fact that they have this neat design where you just basically unhinge the bottom, and then the whole body separates. Right. Um, and see, mine doesn't yeah. have that. It doesn't. And I'm guessing Kevin's doesn't either because it was earlier. And, yeah. and I think mine's even, I think going by uh, Ted's uh, database site, it looks like mine is um, uh, 1955. And so there okay. are even some differences between the one that I ended up with and the one uh, in your video, Joe. Like I've yeah. got the same, uh, the, the, the paper supports the same, but there's not the little, um, uh, little release push button for it mm -hmm. it just mm -hmm. clips down uh behind you know and then the case right. is different like we're noting earlier so they went through some changes like fairly rapidly on those machines but it's really it hard seems to find that way, information yeah. on them you know in, well in you know i did find this one thing maybe you came across it bill but that the guy that owned the company was actually um well i mean they were german but they went on and did things with automobiles they designed like sports cars which oh, doesn't no surprise idea. me at all because of the way the Voss is designed I mean just this whole carriage assembly and this chrome oh my god I mean just somebody knew what they were doing that's all I can say <laughs> they really did they're 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 can definitely you tell in love, but... <laughs> yeah. I, I can tell you're in love with it yes I am but you know Joe the truth is because the platen is so dang hard and it punches through and the the typeface is really tiny um i've been keeping it on my dresser as a display mm. i know it's bad you could hang jewelry off of it you know like <laughs> necklaces <laughs> on the right carriage turn the lever <laughs> <laughs> that's is, a really is good it 12 idea 12 character per inch typeface it's this uh 11 or whatever it is yeah 11 okay yeah. It's, i think yeah. it's 11 or something that's what they said in the ad it's itsy bitsy hmm. um it's nice and you know yeah i got it from um a company that is in the netherlands that's on etsy hmm. and um i didn't know a thing about the voss but i just i looked at it and i looked at a whole bunch of other ones and i thought this is quality and then i listened to a type test sample and i liked how it sounded um the fact of the matter is it didn't come with a case. Um, it was repainted and the, the platen being as hard as it is, I mean, it's not just punching through a little bit, it punches through a lot on all of them. Mm -hmm. But, um, and Maybe sometimes I find a little, that... yeah, yeah, it could be. I find also the alignment is a little funky sometimes on a couple of the letters, mm -hmm. but well, it's, aside from that. It's know. interesting because um, I was um, talking with, um, Matt at Ace Typewriter um, about different machines, and I had mentioned the uh, the Voss to him. At one point, I went. I've thought about doing a uh, buying a birth year uh, typewriter. People. Oh yeah, you should do that. Guitars, for example. <laughs> well, the first time I went to search for birth year, uh, mm -hmm. I was born in '62, and um, uh, a Voss was was one of the typewriters that came up, and I'd never heard of them before. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and, uh, I mentioned to Matt and, and he wasn't exactly 
fond of the machine. I think because there's so much adjustability to them, you know, there's, there's more to possibly, um, I guess, wrong. have to go yeah. wrong or repair. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so from yeah. his viewpoint, I guess that he's probably had a few headaches with them in his lifetime. Um, but it, it, it seems to be a pretty cool machine. Um, pretty cool I, is the word. I'm yeah. hopeful that I'll be able to get going. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I think, I think uh, of the three yeah. German machines, like Voss, Olympia, and uh, maybe Facet, which is Swedish, those three, I think, are the build quality is exceptionally good, but all three of those. I agree. Yeah. Triumph. Bit, yeah. Triumph, yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah. I mean, the German actually Swiss... had a Triumph. Yeah. Oh, he had a Triumph? The time I was in talking to, he had a Triumph that I was uh, typing with, but it had the Elite, the 12 character per inch. Mm. Mm typeface which was just too uh, too tiny for you I have well I can read it if I got my reading glasses on you know yeah um, mm -hmm. um, but it it can be problematic at times mm -hmm. um, yeah but he was explaining to me that the the, the brother that uh, there was a relationship between the brother that started Triumph motorcycles and even though Triumph was a or brother some relationship maybe not brothers I can't recall now but because I was asking him, my first question yeah. was, I, I didn't know they were German machines. I'm like, was this related to Triumph cars or motorcycles? So I understand yes. from my friend Kevin that Triumph, the typewriter company, a German, licensed their logo and their name to the British motor car company. Yes. So, so they so they bought the licensing from the logo and the name. But yeah, mm -hmm. they're. Well, and according yeah. to Matt, there was also some kind of um, actual, um, uh, I don't know if it was relationship through marriage or something, but there was a family tie-in somehow mm. between the two as well. I, I'll ask him the yeah. next time I'm in there to get ribbon or something. And uh, That's interesting. If I can find yeah. out more. That's some cool history. I'd like to look that up too. Yeah. Isn't it fun how you, you learn just, these typewriters are just like a little, thread that attaches you to this amazing history that has mm -hmm. passed us by <laughs> you just follow it down the you know that's like what i always say with typewriters i've learned if there's a problem you just keep following that link following whatever it is and mm -hmm. you're going to exactly, find where the yeah. answer is and it may not necessarily be up front where you think it's going to be it may be way down in the back somewhere but it's all connected it's mm -hmm. pretty that's cool. a good philosophy so the thing that i'm really <laughs> grateful yeah. for for is, is the active community. And um, um, I, I, at some point, actually, I would like to um, carry out some interviews with folks like yourself, Joe or Ted, or I'd like to do profiles of the people that I'm grateful to for the information that I've been able to find. Because like I said earlier, I just got into uh, typewriters uh, last year mm -hmm. and you know, it's, it's like consume me, obviously. Um, mm -hmm. and, and one of the great things is that people have actually taken the time to um, pull together and document things and put it out there and make it available for the rest of us. And, and, yes. you know, and there's not a day that's gone by that I haven't looked something up, you know, in the last mm -hmm. few months that's, oh, here it is. And, mm -hmm. and it's usually the same folks again and again you know so like i said joe with the video um mm -hmm. you know or, or or ted with a number of the things that he's created so i'd yeah. like to um kind of if if folks are willing i'd like to shine the spotlight back on the people that have actually um made things more accessible for someone like me you know who's coming at this um you know a little behind the curve and, and um uh, because i truly am thankful for that Great. Tell you a secret. Thank you. We, we are basically the same as you, except we got into this 10 years earlier. <laughs> I, I, and, that's, and that's fine, but still, the, the, the different, you know what the difference is, though, is that um, you, there's a lot of people that, that get into things. Sorry. No, no. Not everybody <laughs> takes the time to actually put the, the materials out there for everybody else. And yes. that's the difference, you know? Yes. Care. Uh, uh, uh -huh. so that's, that's where my thanks come in. Yeah. Well, yep. If you, well, if right you want a bad you, yeah. interview, then you can talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> I barely so know how what to I talk. do. It's like a, I, I'll, I'll put together like an email questionnaire or something. Sure. And, okay. And, uh, mm -hmm. That'd be and fun. send it to you guys because yeah. uh, I'd really like to do that. That, that right. was one of my goals when I 
um, decided to put together the blog, you know, is like also shine some spotlight on the community because this whole thing with the typewriter club, I mean, just like the things that we've covered in the course of conversation this morning, it's, it's so cool. The, the, um, the things that people are familiar with and connected to and have an interest in that all kind of tie back into typewriters. There's something about the typewriter community itself that I find kind of fascinating yeah. and oh, uh, yeah. really, really enjoy. So I agree with you completely, Bill. You. <laughs> I agree. I agree, Bill. And I'm with you in the same boat. I, I didn't get into the, into typewriters until last year. Um, when I was furloughed from work, then I, miss typing because it's what I do for a living. And mm -hmm. that kind of got me looking at all of the different things that are out there and kind of feeling nostalgic. And I've always liked vintage things anyway. Um, yep. But, you know, I was one of those ones who had spent my life typing and really hadn't used a typewriter since the 80s or 90s. And um, I didn't give them a lot of credit. And then I just started exploring and um, fell in love. And here I am, you know, 30 some typewriters into the, the whole process. <laughs> wow. Um, yeah. yes. In one year, huh? In one year. And I, and That's I, amazing. Yes. And I taught myself how to, you know, fix things up. Thanks to Ted Monk and Joe Van Cleve and a whole bunch of other people. Um, I refurbished or, or reconditioned, I would say, um, and resold half of that collection. And, um, you know, gave machines to my family members um, I received at Christmas time a letter from my mom that included a surprise message from uh, another relative's distant relative in Italy, um, who they had known when my mom was younger. It was a guy that my aunt married, and then his brother uh, dated my mom, and they went to Italy. Well, he got into typewriters, and so he sent this long letter this Christmas about um, the typing and how, how he loved it. And, oh, wow. <laughs> you know, wow, nice. and he described the machines that he has and uses. And as I was reading the letter, I could envision every single one of those machines perfectly because mm -hmm. I've looked at so many of these now that I can almost, except for maybe the seventies and eighties machines, I can almost with accuracy picture the machine in my head when I hear the words, you know, mm -hmm. Smith Corona Clipper, Smith Corona Silent, you know, um, uh, you know, uh, Royal Quiet Deluxe. Obviously, those are the easy ones. Um, Olympia SM3, whatever it is. But now Sphinx. I've got that in my brain. Yeah. <laughs> and it is so fun. Just the fact it that is... you know the easy ones. You know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I know all of the, the ones that are undesirable and I know the ones that people love and, and I know the quirks that each one has. Um, well, within what I've been able to kind of absorb in a year's time. But mm -hmm. um yeah yeah it's it's incredible it's i feel like it's sort of an endless hobby and i wish i could visit all of my friends here and mm -hmm. see the machines you guys have worked on and learn from you hands-on it's just so weird to to still be doing this in a bit of a bubble um <laughs> well i i know yeah. i know uh <clears throat> joe van cleave is gonna be doing uh tours of his house so really? <laughs> <laughs> they're, but they're paid tours i didn't mention yeah, that yeah. did i <laughs> And you have to bring cigars and alcohol <laughs> and coffee. One of those three. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, okay. Mom brought, sent me nice these for writers. Christmas. She sent me these oh, uh, cards nice. that she picked up. Oh, nice. Yeah. Um, and she said she got them at the dollar store. And then she said, um, I hope you'll send these cute cards to your typer friends. Have fun, smile, and share the revolution. Oh, oh, I love wow. mom. Yay. Oh, sweet. So, and then she gave me these vintage type stamps that she likes to use uh, that have gold on them. Anyway, mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's a thing. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's a thing. It yeah, is a thing. It's a thing. Yeah. Yeah. I picked so welcome this, to the weird. <laughs> this is, this is a stencil that I bought. Oh, I don't know. Over a decade ago before mm -hmm. I got into typewriters and it's I picked it up because I liked the typeface I just thought <laughs> it was neat I'm like I think I've been a typewriter lover forever I think I was born this way well, you know you <laughs> yeah. who's to say and otherwise this, it's about four characters per inch so that's pretty big wow, wow. that's awesome yeah it's tedious though <laughs> 
That's cool. Don't expect any letters from me written in that. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a postcard. Maybe one that I mass produce, yeah. perhaps. Well, that looks hey, like something gonna... you use. Like, give me your typewriters or else. Yeah. You know? so. yeah. <laughs> May, I was going to mention that your... Um, your six character per inch Smith Corona would be really good for, for if you were going to make a zine, you know, the thing with oh, zines yeah. is you have to have different typefaces and that would be great for titles. For titles. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that would something be great. about my six per inch, a little show and tell is I put a cotton spool on the typewriter oh. and I don't know if you can, let's see if I can spotlight. The difference, the top and the bottom wow. are the cotton, and the middle is the standard nylon ribbon. Mm -hmm. So I'm oh. waxing poetic about my typewriters as I, you know, test them. So you can definitely tell it makes them much bolder, darker with the cotton. I really like it on this typewriter. Mm. You wow. Know, it really lends itself well to the large print. But I tried it on a smaller. This is cursive, and you can see that it's way too... <clears throat> Oh, yeah. way interesting. Too too bold, way too thick for yeah. a fine print typewriter. But this cotton interesting. ribbon is great for something mm. like a pica. It looks good on pica. Um, it looks good on the large print, but anything elite or smaller, I don't have anything smaller than elite, it's it's almost too bold. Mm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But it, if you wanted that effect, you could definitely, you know, use that. Wow. Isn't that beautiful? Wow. Brother this cursive. I just love, it. I love And you it. type nice. in two column typing. That's pretty cool, huh? Yeah. Well, yes, because this is going to be a typecast. And, you know, you oh. have to make the margins narrow. Yes, I you do. I from you guys, <laughs> the typewriter experts. <laughs> are, are, is your blog on the type, the blog roll, May? I think Ted did put it on the blog yep. roll, but I've been okay. terrible. I haven't updated okay. it in, in probably over a month. So I'm oh, okay. I know, I keep checking. Busy. I need to get busy. I've, <laughs> I've typed a lot of stuff. I just haven't scanned it in and updated it. So I'm a little bit behind on the actual publishing. So, so what is your no what is your mechanics around typing two columns? I mean, obviously, you set your margin narrow, but you have to be careful not to overrun the margin too far, right? Well, I just set the margins <clears> twice. <throat> you know, I set oh, yeah. the margins to do the left column and then reset them to do the right do you find yourself doing more hyphenated words in order to stay within that narrow margin? Definitely, and I break yeah. the hyphenation rules too. Sometimes I'll put two letters and then a dash. <gasps> oh, you know, things like that. Well, <laughs> this is another thing that I I've been meaning to make a video about with my friend Kevin, but for various reasons, you know, he's busy and stuff. But he's been working on a long-term project to figure out the most efficient line spacing using English where you don't have as many line breaks or it breaks at the end of the line. And what we figured out a break was, was either a standard hyphenation between uh, syllables, what, like the standard rule for hyphenation or hyphen or breaking it between words where a natural break occurs. And it turns out that there are various sizes of a line length, a certain number sizes work better than others for mm. uh, minimizing the amount of breaks and making a e more even right margin. And it, it also depends on what kind of language you're using. Like I was using as an example text, a, an excerpt from a New Yorker magazine article, and it happened to have a lot more long words because it was talking about deep sea diving or something like that. Whereas if you take an article out of the Albuquerque Journal or some typical newspaper that writes to like eighth grade English levels, you're going to probably have a lot more shorter words. But it seems like for the most average word length, there are certain lengths of lines that work better than others. Anyway, that's, that's another thing that I want to do on a blog about or a video about eventually. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. You, you were touching on formatting uh, for what was the type typecast? Yeah, yeah, typecasting for blogging. Yeah. So, so what are the um, like in a nutshell the general do's and don'ts? Well, I think the principle is that a lot of people might be looking at your blog on a on a phone or a mobile device with a small oh, screen, okay. and you don't want to take a letter size eight and a half inch wide paper and put 
you know, a seven inch long line of elite characters, you know, that, that would be unreadable. Right. And so like my template in blogger is the text portion is 650 pixels wide. So I tend to use um, like in normal letter size, I tend to use a hat, roughly a half size column, depending on if it's Pike or elite, but I try to make it so that uh, when you scan that photograph it, take the margins down. I don't leave a lot of space on the, to the left and the right yeah. of my type so that the letters are as big as possible. So it's easy to read. So yeah. I can take my small phone and I can turn it sideways and I can read someone's mm -hmm. blog pretty easily, right? Without having to zoom in and go back and forth because the lines are too long. So um, I think- so I Oh, yeah, I was just gonna say, I think I'm guilty of using full size sheets with just one inch margins. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I tend to use uh, three and a half inch margins or four inch margins at the at the most because I like to have the text be large so that you right. can actually see the individual yeah. characteristics of the yes, roughness of those the letters. Embossedness. Yeah, and, and that got gets me back to one of the first times that I started doing the roll of paper thing. Mm -hmm. I found a roll of white paper yeah, that was six inches wide and it was, it was white paper that was um, 3M brand used in automobile masking and I, and for painting and I got it from oh, wow. the uh, Napa, the, the, the Napa auto parts painting yeah. store. And it, ah. it, it, the paper wasn't really ideal for taking typewriter ink because it almost had a slightly waxy feel like the way some of that erasable bond <laughs> typing <laughs> paper is, you know, it doesn't take as dark of an imprint, but it was the six inch wide paper was perfect for like Ted says, for having a little bit of a margin mm -hmm. and still having a, a narrow, it forces you to make a narrow line. Mm -hmm. and. And that's one of the things I do now. Typically, I'm using regular size paper or half size paper, but I, I have to consciously think, is this going to be a blog article or if it's, if it's not before I start typing it? Because, you know, it, I, I really want it to be narrow if it's going to be a blog article so that it's easy to read. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah I think I'm going to have to put a little bit more um, a thought and planning in, into mind. So um, if, if anything that is put together is, that I put together is hard to to read. Of course, I've I've also doubled up and included my uh, text uh, repeated, you know, like um, right. electronically. Yeah. So, but I would like it so that you know I'm going to the trouble to type something. It should be legible. Um, yeah. So this is helpful. I think the other rule go. that helps is if you are going to do more of a wider line, to do a, a, a one and a half or double spacing. <laughs> it makes it easier to read because yeah. when you go from the carriage return, your eyes cut back. It's it's mm -hmm. less problematic with skipping lines. But if you're doing a narrow column, I think you can get away with single line spacing more because yeah. sure. yeah. it's easier to to follow the line better. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. cool. Thanks very much. Yeah. For, for writing letters, especially, I love one and a half uh, line spacing. Yeah, I just mm -hmm. I just think it looks That's really my nice. Favorite too. That's it yeah. does just definitely, and you'll find much. that on those uh, European ones, right? The Olympias, yeah. Japanese, and stuff. European, yeah. and the newer Smith Coronas, <clears throat> the nineteen <throat> seventies and later Smith Coronas. Yeah, which mm -hmm. are as yeah. popular. <laughs> I, I have a um an, another question since I have a typewriter knowledgeable group of people here. Um, I've been eyeing a couple of, um, uh, I've kind of taken an interest in this, uh, the, the um, Montgomery Ward signature uh, oh, series. There's oh, a couple yes. of them in, in my local uh, marketplace, the 440T. I which love is, the 440T. Talking May's language. She loves it. It's on the brother yeah. machine. Yeah. And so, so um, I just, Memories, uh, you know, being a kid of, Mon I just remember Montgomery Wards, you know, and I yeah. like the styling Monkey of that Wards. machine in particular. Yep. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Monkey my <laughs> grandfather, um, my grandfather actually worked at Montgomery Wards. In oh, did he really? Oregon. Yeah, wow. back in the oh, that's day, funny. He, well, the, the, he sold the building, machines, the Montgomery Wards mm -hmm. building mm -hmm. is huge here, right? Now it's, they re, uh, relabeled it, you know, Montgomery Park, but that oh, great yeah. big building used to be Montgomery Wards, mm -hmm. their, their, um, the big warehouse. Yeah. Um, anyway, yeah. that I figured this would be the perfect place to inquire about those typewriters and, and thoughts and opinions on them. 
I have had four of those 440Ts and I have three still <laughs> and I love them. They're, that speaks highly of them. You're talking about the yeah. little plastic shelled ones. Mm -hmm. I, it's, uh, it's kind of a charcoal looking yeah. uh, mm -hmm. with the silver. Uh, it's got like a silver um, uh, face, you know, just above mm -hmm. the, the keys there. Yeah. Um, and, and then I know that like the carriage, uh, the, the, uh, plat knobs are white. Um, mm -hmm. so that it's a know, plastic body. Uh, do you know who made it uh, for Montgomery, Montgomery uh, Wards? Was brother. that Silver Seiko or it was brother? Brother. Brother. Yeah. Brother. Brother. brother? Yeah. They're really good uh, machines, I think. Okay. Yep. Cool. Yeah. I mean, I think the only... Show. Yeah, the only downside to the brothers might be that if you're used to a really light touch, they can sometimes be a little heavier, but that's just the way they are. But um, they're, they're the precision of the parts, they're made really well. Um, so, you know, that's that's a good thing. And the Japanese typewriters seem to be generally pretty reliable, I've seen. Yes. Mm -hmm. And they're heavy. Like yeah. all are they? other machines are very solid. Yeah. Oh. The 511D. Mm. So I oh. like the wide platen for... Stream of consciousness typing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. I love that. Brothers, I agree, are, are some of the best typewriters. I'm biased because it was one of my first. And uh, <laughs> thank goodness, because if I had gotten a bad typewriter as my first, I might not have been so inclined to type yeah. more, right? <laughs> That's right. That the Good truth. Mm -hmm. Has anyone well, I'm going to have to get one. Coal hmm? Steel typewriter? Coal Steel? Anybody? Coal Steels I... are cool but they have a problem with their escapement. Uh, then very often they will be uh, basically unusable because of uh, a problem with a, there's a design flaw in the escapement where they used a rubber uh, spacer between two metal parts oh right boy. there in the, in the guts <laughs> of the machine. And when that rubber spacer thing goes, the whole escapement dies. It wow. just wow. is just useless. It's it sim reminds me of the, there's a rubber part in the Smith Corona 5 series escapements, mm -hmm. but it doesn't seem to be as sensitive to the, to the quality of that piece huh. when it degrades. Do you know That's that part I'm talking about, Ted? Yeah, like it's, a the, little, it's the little pad that uh, uh, yeah. it kind of folds over a metal part. Right, right. Oh, interesting. I'm uh, yeah, going to start looking at the one. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to pick one? one up in an hour. I'm going to pick one up in an hour. I found one Ooh. not so locally. I'm not going to say where because Greg might. Greg, <laughs> Greg's going to snap it up. <laughs> I would advise based on based on what He'll Ted said. Up. I would just advise to test it out good, right? Mm -hmm. But like, mm -hmm. especially do some staccato typing. Yeah, you know, one yep. letter quickly followed by another, mm -hmm. and and yeah, yeah, just to see, you know, just and then. Just to give it an improper touch to try to force <laughs> yeah. it to. The other thing is to, <laughs> if you elevate the right side of the typewriter slightly and, and try to type, if it's if it has a tendency to skip, you'll see it oh. more if you elevate the right side because it's, it's, it right allows side. the carriage to accelerate the speed a little bit better. That's, that's a way to, yeah. And then try the other way. Try the left side up to see if it's going to pile on letters, right? Huh. But. Right, right, right. That is fascinating. I'm going to do that with all my machines now. <laughs> <laughs> Make a little. Then you won't like them anymore. <laughs> no. Oh, no. And then send them no. to Joe. Send them to like, That's Joe, right. It's I have to buy another one. What am I going to do? I need to buy another machine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm linking to my 440Ts in the chat. So if you want yeah. to take a look oh, at thank some. you. May, I was noticing when you brought out your brother earlier <laughs> that it was color coordinated with your with your clothing. Your yes. Yeah, it, it, it was almost the same color. <laughs> <That's awesome. laughs> I thought you were being very nifty with color oh, coordination with there. Those brothers, yes. there. There was no choice. They're, they only came in blue. And those oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we should all dress anyway. to match our typewriters one day. That's that right. Be the <laughs> <laughs> Everybody well, wears the. <laughs> Next week is type and talk, so is it? Yes. I'll have to see if I can find some sea foam green for a Hermes somewhere. <laughs> nice, <laughs> Hermes. wouldn't that be nice? Yeah. Wear solid black. 
Mm-hmm. Well, if you have enough typewriters, you could do it the other way. You could just put on whatever clothes and then try to find the typewriter to match it. <laughs> that matches, yeah. <laughs> well, that would be easy for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, just wear one of those 80s shirts with all kinds of colors all right. over it and hold it up. <laughs> that could work too. <laughs> nice. Uh, that's fun. I think, Ted, you've got a bowling shirt on today. That looks cool. Uh, yeah. Is that what that is? Snazzy. Kind of- <laughs> It's neat. That looks good. Yeah, I have a typewriter question. What does it say on it? Similar to Woo! Emily. Oh, that's cool. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> that is super cool. Oh, this nice. is this wow. is my boozer bear what shirt. Got? What do you like got? A, yeah, go ahead. Well, it's a, my <clears throat> favorite. I, I think I have oh, five yeah. or six. Oh yeah. Oh yes. Um, but five it's similar to Emily's mm-hmm. issue. If I return, oops, let me unlock this. If I you know move the. Uh, carriage it sounds fine but when i go to return listen oh i might have to take me oh. back oh. look up may me look up holt change. silencer holt, okay. holt silencer? as in richard polt oh silencer holt silencer and he he has a a thing uh, on how to actually build that silencing spring for a smith corona Okay. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, because it, it types fine. You know, mm-hmm. there's no issues with the way it moves, but every time I go in here, it returns. It's, it's pretty yep. loud. And none of my other five series do that. So, uh, again, that's, that's, again, that's not damaging stuff. the machine. It's just, uh, it's just noisy. A, a silencing spring <laughs> is missing or it's out it's of noisy. place. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Balancing. Spring. It's almost like the sound that the Olympia SM3 used to make for me when it yeah. didn't have the washers yes. properly, but mm-hmm. it's different, a different issue. Let's shift see. I, have, I have this, the floating shift, which is, you know, this That's yeah, it's, a, it's in there. Is that really? It's in there. Okay. Uh-huh. So I just haven't. But uh, it actually it Richard Polt has enough. come up with a, uh, a, work around to make one if you don't have one still in your machine hmm. and i'm linking the link right there in the chat excellent that is super cool. oh, speak speaking of but richard Polt, yeah it's not hurting the machine speaking of richard Polt, wouldn't it be okay. nice to get him on a typewriter club it one would Sunday be morning? Nice. that would be Why so awesome Wow. Yeah. <laughs> this is where all the world famous typewriter people hang out. Yes. <laughs> Might be because it's a Sunday morning and oh, oh is, that's true. Yeah, he's a Sunday works, person. Yeah, he's a Sunday. He probably goes to church or something on Sunday. He works mm. on Sundays. This is my church, unfortunately. <laughs> 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 Let's all that doesn't make me a bad person. That's right. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a typewriter sinner. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, you're going to we'll be let, let the, this group. Yes, we'll let the uh, the Reverend Ted Monk lead us in the I'm presiding yes. over this. Yes, group. please. Thank you. Thank you. I have on a, your typewriter in prayer. I confess go. I have sinned. I have purchased too many typewriters. <laughs> That's not a sin. That's that's that gets you into that's heaven. That's the opposite. That's Does the opposite it? of the that sin. That gets you oh, into right. typewriter heaven right there. There you even go. Even if it is bright cherry red, even if it yeah. is bright cherry red, it's still good. I know it's pretty <laughs> sinful, but it sounds like I've got a first class ticket to heaven. Then that's good, good news. <laughs> My hey. soul can rest at ease. <laughs> now, Ted, I responded with a link uh, to the uh, what? Look, I think the one that um, the couple out here are a little bit older. So the styling's a little bit different on them, which it looks like you used to own one of those too. I was, I sent a, a link in the chat. Which machine? The uh, the 440T. Oh, oh okay. yes. Pulling it up now. Let's see. Oh yeah, okay. So that's the 1966 version. So I have one of those, yeah. Is that the one that you, you were looking at? Yes. Okay. Those I like too. Um, they're just not the plastic ones, which are a little quieter. Ah, okay. The neat thing about these uh, 66 variations is you can get them in this color. They also come in kind of a gray uh, or a white paint job with gray keys. Hmm. Uh, and many of them come in, in like an attache style briefcase. Yeah. Which yeah, is that's cool. what, both of these have that where it's got like a place where a little folder pocket or whatever. I think mm-hmm. you can put your papers and pen holders and uh, kind of interesting. Yeah, I really like those cases. Those are <laughs> those are neat. 
Okay, good. I appreciate the feedback. Yeah. We have uh, Patty Barnett in the comments. She says she's lurking in the background and uh, she's waiting for her royal delivery. Woo. Nice. What <laughs> color is it? I want I to know, huh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's so many. <laughs> you know, I noticed something weird. I don't know if you guys saw this on Shop Goodwill, um, but yesterday there was this really wonderful little um, Smith Corona Skywriter that was in like mint condition and it was brown with the stripes and everything. Mm -hmm. And I considered bidding on it, but, and I, I did. And then I had sticker shock because I went to look at the shipping price and normally Ooh. it's like 10 oh, or 20 yeah, bucks or something. Yeah, it was, and it's a little machine. Mm -hmm. It was coming from, I think, New Jersey or something. It was a hundred dollars to ship yeah. from yeah. Goodwill. And I couldn't believe it. And then I wrote to them. Oh. Luckily I got outbid. It was one of those moments where I was like, oh, thank God. someone was <laughs> 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 Because I can't right. afford to spend 150 oh, on that, nor sure. would I want to. Like right. my price for that machine would be like 50 to 75 tops. But, um, I, right. I couldn't believe I did yeah. you guys have you seen that happening at shop goodwill yeah that, I've seen it yeah that what happened. the heck they're, they're that building so profit bizarre. into is the, the shipping is that what they're no. doing it's, profit. Extra. it's just profit on the on the shipping uh, yep. I always check a lot of eBay do for that shipping. Too. the last machine I won was well. on the 29th and it was $30 with free shipping so that's why I wow <laughs> that's good <laughs> it can go the other way I've I've yeah. I bought a Skywriter on uh, eBay once where I won a 99% 99 cent bid and the guy mm -hmm. charged me $12 for shipping wow and wow. when I got it, I actually looked at the shipping tag to see how much he paid. Mm -hmm. He ended up making 40 cents on the deal. Oh, really? So, man. Uh, <laughs> I was, I was yeah. glad that I got it. And, you know, it was a, it was a good deal. Yeah. But I feel sorry for the guy because he, he really got ripped off. Yeah, that's yeah. like what happened when I sold a Remington once on uh, Etsy. The shipping was so much that it was... I didn't make really anything. The woman was really nice. And she's like, oh, I can go in halvesies for you if you want. And I said, you know, I'm just such a rookie. I didn't know any better. And those Remingtons weigh a lot. So mm -hmm. um, it was it was a lot more than I had experienced with shipping on other machines. Um, mm -hmm. But I just said, write me a nice review. And she did. It was very sweet. But after that, I was like, I'm done for a while. Yeah. So you still I, have an Etsy store, uh, sir? I do. Um, I think it's called Little Office Boutique. Uh, mm -hmm. it's a cute little one i i sold a couple machines and then i just kind of backed off from it um mm -hmm. and i sold them cheaply to well cheaply by etsy standards um yeah. i fixed them up and i sold them for like 99 dollars or something or 119 oh, yeah. something you know what i mean um yeah. because i was just getting my foot in the door and i wanted to attract customers and um i i sold um it was a a model 5 remington that i purchased it's a really cute machine cleaned it up really well the person was so happy. And I think I sold another, I um, can't remember. Well, it was the Remington. And, um, you know, in the end, at the end of the day, I didn't really make much, but. Um, there, there yeah. is a reason that they charge that much and it's because they have to, in order yeah. to, you know, to make up the cost to justify. of what they're doing, of shipping. Mm -hmm. They don't really know how much it's going to cost to ship. So they got to mm -hmm. charge a little extra. Right. Um, I mean, I can see that. I, I look at, Etsy prices and I I think oh you're charging you know 150 to 250 sometimes 300 bucks for a typewriter yeah um and that seems high to me because I mm -hmm. get my machines at thrift Typewriter's stores yeah. yeah yeah but realistically that's I mean it's really what the machine is worth if you think about it and right it if is it's, it's refurbished what, yeah yeah and it's what they what they have to charge in order to make any kind of money at all so I mean, and if you want it to be true. shipped safely, yeah. you know, it's going to cost yeah. something to pack it properly, right? Exactly. Double right. box it yeah. and all that. Oh, God. I mean, I spent $20 just on, on the packing materials mm -hmm. and stuff for that right. machine. Because yeah. I, yeah. and you know, it arrived perfectly. The person was really happy. And I had completely cleaned it and detailed everything. But, mm -hmm. you know, Etsy said, give it, give free shipping because customers will like it. Mm -hmm. And that was the dumbest advice. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> it was the dumbest advice. Aww. Exactly. Because, because one of the machines cost me $65 to ship. And I was mm -hmm. like, oh, I'd put all this time into it. I'd purchased it for, you know, like half of what I sold it for. And it was just a loss, you know. Yeah. 
But so I have a question for everybody. Pictures. <laughs> for those of you who bought who've bought typewriters on Etsy, which I never have, do you have any Etsy stores, any people on Etsy that you advise are good for Tony's buying typewriters? typewriters. Tony's? Tony's typewriters, yeah. They're expensive, but they ship well. They're coming from the Netherlands, and Netherlands is kind of like the mecca for typewriters. You can get really beautiful <laughs> machines. Mm. Um, they do a lot of repaint jobs, but not all of them are repainted. And when you get it, you open it up, and there is a big red bow Aww. inside, <laughs> and there is a note nice. loaded into the platen. Nice. Um, you know, from them, and it is such a wonderful presentation. And that's how I got this one when I received wow. it. You know. It was like three or four weeks after I bought it and I was itching to get it. I opened it up and it was like Christmas in July. It was so great. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so I love those guys. Now I know that um, Jennifer, Jennifer Colombo actually apparently buys machines from them and she fixes them up. She must get a really good deal or something. I know fixes she's not paying them up. fixes them up. Right. <laughs> and she told, and she made some comment at one point that she actually, um, laughs when she gets them because because they always put that red bow that they wrap around the typewriters mm -hmm. for every single one even if it's something that she thinks is junk and she's going to do something weird with it um, she she doesn't care for their paint job or whatever she'll redo it herself but she said yeah they always put a bow on so that's mm -hmm. their signature thing and I think it's pretty awesome and they also do these little videos showing themselves typing it's oh, just yeah. more and it's a very quick little, you know, da 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 da. But you get yeah, to just hear like the a machine. Minute. Yeah, just like a minute. Machine that you're buying. But, right, but because that's you cool. get to hear that machine, I think that's uh, that's a big thing right there. You oh, get yeah. to see kind of how it's working. Yeah. Now they do hunt and peck. Drives me crazy. But <laughs> <laughs> so that reminds me, Sarah. I saw you earlier while other people were talking. I saw you turn to your machine and start typing. Yes. And I was just curious if you could uh, indulge us and give us a little bit of. Uh, expert <laughs> typing uh, demonstration. <laughs> My pleasure. No <laughs> pressure. <you'd> never ask. <laughs> Back again. Oh my goodness! Look at her type. I know. So fast. Yeah. It mutes the. Um, yeah. The sound yeah. Background noise. I'll have yeah. to figure that out for next week. I'm typing talk. <laughs> yeah, on on her phone, if she turns off, uh, likes to crumble. There's a setting called yeah. uh, "Use Original Sound," but yeah, that's pretty quick, Sarah. That's yeah. really amazing. Yeah. And I noticed you. you're using a manual typewriter technique, like you you're hovering above the keys a little, and, and not a yeah, not a, a a keyboarding technique. You're actually using a typewriter technique, which is really cool. Thank you. I had to train myself um, because, you know, my whole life I've done it the other way. Right. But I, I actually watched a bunch of videos um, and heard comments from typewriter people about how we modern folk blow it yeah. by doing it wrong. Yeah. <laughs> so, I, so I have taught myself uh, that I sometimes do forget. Can hear That's a wonderful. Yeah. Barely. Tick, tick, tick. <laughs> yeah, that's really cool because that's it incredible. looks like your hands are moving more than I expected off the really? home row. And I, yeah. you know, like, and so it seems like it would be hard for me to find the home row again without looking at the keys if I was moving them that much. You know what I mean? Like, I, the way I do a keyboard on a computer is I sort of just, you know, you sort of look snick, 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 you know, it's not much movement required and you can kind of keep your, your home fingers on the home row as you're going, you know, but you do really well for moving she, the hand so much. Yeah. She's Thank a you. professional. Yeah. That's, yeah I'm, can, a, I'm amazed. Looking, of course. <laughs> that's amazing. Most of it without looking. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so do you have, do you have an adjustment period when you go from one kind of typewriter to another? Cause the, the keyboards are slightly different. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I would yeah. say it takes about half an hour to an hour to really get in the groove with any new machine or any oh. like switching between the machines. Um, so, yeah. And so especially what's, what's if your... you go. Hmm. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. Well, I mean, especially if you're going to do like a, um, a Remington noiseless, that's a whole different ball of wax. So, yeah. So what is your, gonna... what do you think is the best typewriter that you have for, for fast typing, a manual typewriter? The um, Olympia's, um, Although, no, I would say that the Smith Corona Electric Series 5, again, okay. absolute favorite. 
Yeah. Um, then I would say the tower tabulators because they're basically Smith Corona fives. Okay, so the five um, series Smith Coronas you think are the best for, yeah. Personally, yes. Um, yeah. And then from there, I would go with um, Smith Corona Silent. Um, oh, I've got that um, Remington Noiseless, but it's not my fastest. It's, it's an interesting machine and I like it very much, but right. it's not something I would do production typing on. I'm trying to okay. think what else. Um, the Olympias, I really like them. Although okay. the Olympia SM3 I have, I would like to have it be, um, I'd like it to have a new platen. Okay. So I think that would make a difference maybe. And also Which, the fact that it's carriage shift, that's no fun. Okay. But, but you find the keyboard on the Olympia is okay. It, it's. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, now that you're asking me, I'm going to sit down and try to play around with it again. Oh yeah. Because I may find that, that, that it's not as great as I thought. I don't know. Okay. What about the um, Hermes 3000? Do you, do you oh, like that? Oh my God. I totally forgot about that one because that's at my mom's house. <laughs> I mean, why are we even talking about these? No, well, I'm just right? curious. <laughs> I mean, as a fast well, typist, professional think, manual typist, you can you have Hermes a lot to say here. Yeah, Hermes three thousand feels so good to use. It really, uh -huh. really does. I I miss it, um, and I hope someday to get a Hermes two thousand that works. Yeah, you know, because uh, my friend Kevin and I, we've made some comparisons <laughs> between typewriter manual typewriters in terms of the keyboards you know like mm -hmm. the spacing of the keys and we find that some keyboards the keys are only maybe two millimeters closer together mm -hmm. but it makes it feel so much more crowded more. You, yes. you know and then also in in the case of the shift lock how close is it to the letter a has a lot mm -hmm. to do with how many misstrikes you make because kevin has stronger hands than i do but he often misstrikes an a on a machine mm -hmm. where the where the, the caps lock is crowding into the a you know what i mean so those little I do the same yeah yeah, yeah uh, i do the same thing because i've got these kind of like big german chunky hands and so <laughs> I, I like to have a good substantial keyboard. I mean, right, I, right. I, I'm no delicate daisy here. <laughs> delicate daisy. <laughs> German chunky hands. I like that. German chunky hands. <laughs> I got, yeah, my Teutonic claws. No. Teutonic claws. I like that. Well, that's yeah. good. It's, it's really good advice. I really appreciate you t telling us about, you know, what works good and stuff. So interesting. Oh, I'm delighted. Yeah. I'm delighted you asked. Thank you. So, but, but if you had to choose now between a Hermes 3000 and a Smith Corona <laughs> 5 Series, as for entire, just in terms of t the keyboard, how mm -hmm. easy it is to type, would it be a tough decision, do you think? Because, you know, the Smith Coronas yeah. have that ergonomics of the way the keycap stays flat throughout its stroke, yeah. you know? Yeah. That the, you're, yeah. you're making it, you're, you're asking me a tough question, Joe. Yeah, I, mean, I know. <laughs> you're asking, you're asking, you asking me to sacrifice babies. Sacrifice yeah. Favorite <laughs> children. Why would I do that? Why would you do that? Yeah. <laughs> so if I'm looking at a choice between a non-electric Smith Corona yeah. Series 5 right. and, a, and a Hermes, I would pick the Hermes. However, okay. if you give me the electric Series 5, yeah. I'm just going to accomplish a whole lot more. Right. So... You know, and it's and it's the electric assist. I mean, it's not the same yes. as an electric typewriter per se. Right. Um, but you know, I'm I'm in love with both of them. So. Um, yeah, I find the electric type R machines are really amazing. Yeah. Oh, and, yeah. And yeah. right I now, I think yeah. they're still under they're still like underappreciated. So you might be able to get good good deals oh, under, on auction I'm sites. Yeah. 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 You know, it's it's funny. I got that. Um, the Smith Corona bottle green sure. series five electric that has cursive um, on Ooh. shop goodwill some time ago for like 50 or 60 bucks. Mm -hmm. And there's another one I noticed on there right now. And it's already over 160 on so in the options. That. It's the green. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Same exact one that I have. Um, so I think they are, I think people are learning that yeah. they're, there's something to think about. Um, yeah. I hope that you're right that they're underappreciated, Joe, because I appreciate them so much that I wouldn't mind having quite a few of them. <laughs> All of them. <laughs> and as, as people get more adept at repairing typewriters also, they're discovering that those electrics are pretty repairable. Yeah. You know, you have yes. the drive belts, and then mm -hmm. some of them, that, the ones that have the automatic carriage return, have a, mm -hmm. a clutch mechanism for that. And that's the only thing that, you know, they have to kind of worry about and maintain so it's show and tell yes. my favorite oh um, I, yes the electra 220 oh the electra 220 fly. yes 
And this one's belts are actually still nice. So every now and then, you know, if the typewriter has been stored well, sometimes the belts are just fine. Sure. Mm -hmm. and it's got you... all of the bells and whistles, uh, oh, yeah. one and a half line spacing. Oh it's yeah. Got a power return, half space, power space, like yeah. literally everything. And the thing I appreciate with the new electric typewriters is that they have the, um, the quote. The auto repeat. The oh. Yeah. Oh yes, the quote oh, no, mark. The, uh, yeah. the, the apostrophe. Yes. The mark and the apostrophe right here. Yes. For a normal, right where you need them. You know, computer. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yes. Keyboard. Exactly. Yes. So the yeah. newer electrics are much more efficient to me. Yeah. Yeah. Them, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you have the auto repeat for the period and the X and the and the hyphen. Yes. And yes. the space yes. bar. Yeah. You know. Use that as much, but it's just the speed, you know. The, oh yeah. May you, you can sell. It. You can sell yeah. this. I, and, I mean, look I, at you. You can sell this. And they're not that much more harder to maintain other right. than the motor. You know, you do have right. to sometimes clean the motor, change the belts. Oh, right. But oh. most of the other mechanics are very similar. <clears throat> it it reminds me, <laughs> your sales pitch reminds me of Billy Mays. <laughs> Powered by the air you breathe. You need to use that. <laughs> powered by the air you breathe. That is so true. By the fingers you use. Yes, well, powered. Well, it's not real, but it's. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> the one problem with these electrics is that people do tend to smush the cord in the case yes. when they close yeah. it. Yeah. And this is a classic problem. Yeah. Um, and, and why you'll sometimes find these with a broken cord or right. completely cut off. Yep. And I, I did learn how to replace the electrical cord on the, the Series 5 electrics good good um and i yep. did it so it's you not too hard <laughs> yeah just get a I'm get an extension cord so and you know yes, and cut the end off and yep. solder it in there with the heat shrink tubing and make sure it's a good connection and yeah exactly yep. i i didn't actually Original. solder what i did is i i can well i the, the wire off, lugs but, yeah yeah i used the wire lugs and i also got a got a stripper clamps for it oh good yeah and i went and did it properly but yeah i was nervous as a cat because you know, I was doing it for a friend and oh, it was so nerve wracking. So, so my friend great. Kevin, yeah. my friend Kevin has a facet, large facet type R electric that he got recently and he's still working on it, but it has both a cloth ribbon and a carbon film ribbon spool system. And you can switch between the two just with the, the ribbon color selector. Oh, and, interesting. And it has a special power cord connector that he, the cord is missing from it. And so what he's going to do is, or at least what I advised him to do, is you know, the standard uh, commercial style plugs that you use in like computer monitors and those kind of mm -hmm. plugs, they're kind of like square pronged, three prongs. Yes. I, I advise him to, to install a female, ver well, a f the male version in the typewriter. And then you can use just a standard commercial cord from a, for any computer monitor, or whatever, to power it. Th That's that would a be a idea. good way. Yeah. Instead of that, that custom little 1960s connector that it had that you can't find anywhere else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, that's a but good it, idea. it's a really cool machine. And we yeah. actually had to adjust the clutch uh, on, on the spindle to do the carriage return. Mm -hmm. And we, and it, we, he got it, we got working pretty well now. So it's a, it's a, it's a huge machine though. It's like the wow. size of an SG three, you know, uh, <laughs> kind of machine. And, and the carriage does come off just, you you take off four four Wait. screws and it comes off. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So uh, awesome. Patty Barnett That's in so the neat. in the chat says, uh, "I find the electric return feels like it will fly off the table if not yeah. added correctly." <laughs> yeah, Lo They're love the electric with power return. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's scary. Yeah. It's scary. It yeah. is, <laughs> especially if you leave your coffee cup. Sitting to the right of the machine. <laughs> it's over there. Too bad. I'm doing which, which was the other thing that that Kevin and I were <laughs> worth noting one time was we would often when we were over at his house he would make a gin and tonic, mm -hmm. and it would it would always be. Uh, finding the right size glasses so they will clear underneath the carriage. <laughs> wow. You, <laughs> one of your videos, taller you? than the carriage. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or you just getting a taller, a whole new getting level. a taller <laughs> typewriter where you can have a taller glass, you know, that would be. It worked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what's that? Uh, I said it worked with the Smith Premier, remember? Because I, I, I was there when you guys did uh, that. That's oh right. Gosh. I remember that. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> I have a few, a few things to show now that I'm finally back home. 
Oh, good. Yay, welcome aboard. Okay. Um, <gasps> oh. Oh. Family. Oh, those are minty. Family. Look at the stripies. Yes. Oh, nice. those are minty yes. stripes. Like super this, this, and one, the this one stinks to high heaven, and I haven't done anything about it. <laughs> Um, mm, what does it smell like? Is it eau de, eau de mildew eau or de eau de mold. smoke? It's, or it's eau de mold. <laughs> mold, mold. mildew. Mm. Oh, and dear. then we have this one here. Mm. Oh, 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 that's the nice. Desert nice. sand yes. or whatever. You've got, you've got the like full that. family oh, there. Super. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, the, ele I the electric I have doesn't look as good as everything else. I wish it did, but it does not. It's. It's ugly, mm. but hey, oh, it works. I love it. You know it's what? I have one of those. You can clean oh, it up, yeah. and it is a beauty. It really can yep. be. Mm -hmm. Those things yeah, type really great. <laughs> yeah, I've got is, the same clean, one. I think it works, mm -hmm. and it it even it even got a new platen this last time around. Yay! Mm. So, but uh, anyway, I like yeah. this. Yeah. I don't really, I don't really see yeah, that. that's nice. the, the blues and the pinks. I don't really see this color too often. Yeah, no, no. that's rare. Yeah, that's so, nice. Mm -hmm. I picked it up wow. from a guy, a local, I forget if it was Facebook or I think I actually wrote it down <laughs> Facebook Marketplace. Mm. Oh, yeah. Funny, I, I hadn't used, I hadn't touched it basically all year. And then I just, and then it's like, because I wrote that I bought it on January 29th last year. Mm. And it's a 57. Oh, that's the year of my birth. Really? Oh. <laughs> Joe's a 57 Chevy. Send it to Joe. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is desert colored. 57. That's the year of my large font typewriter, the 1950. Oh, oh cool. I, I see two typewriters in yeah. my future. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. I'm hanging on to the large font because someday oh, well. we'll need it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we will. That's right. That's right. Exactly. I have a, I have a Joe, serious What's that pendulum that swinging it's, on it's your It's a funky color as well. What's that? I say what? I have a Sears president. Oh. Oh, the tower president. Yeah, that's the a good tower. One. Yeah. Yep. My that's my messy same. pile of typewriters. Oh, I see so many boxes I want to open. Look at all those wonderful <laughs> cases. Just oh like yeah. Christmas. Just begging it's, to be. It's typewriter holiday Christmas. Holiday cases. <laughs> Woo. There, there we go. There, there's, there's my. I need wow. shots in here very oh, badly. Diane, Diane. Yes. There's a Olympia. That Olympia. SM3 oh, or 4. Yeah. Isn't it neat how you yeah. learn how to recognize the cases now? <laughs> oh, yeah. It's a little yeah. frightening. It's a little frightening. <laughs> a Royal it's Quiet more Deluxe. It's a little frightening. <laughs> yeah, there's the Smith Corona. Series 5 Electric. There, there, there you yeah. go. There's, there's the, the Royal. Uh, Smith, or the, there's the Smith wow. Premier. Yep, I see the LC Smith up there. Yeah. Oh, okay. boy. Here we go. This one, this one actually has the original sales tag on it. Oh, oh my cool. gosh. I love those. Oh wow. yeah, you know, uh, I Richard Holt has that one. Yeah, Ooh, my yeah. friend Kevin has a Sears tower like this, and I think they really look better than the actual Smith Corona I version. Agree. I like the styling better. Yeah, yeah. yeah. they look I'm really good. Harder edge to the um, yeah, the, the ribbon, ribbon cover. cover. Yeah, are, there, are they basically silent supers? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, they yeah. are. They're so yeah. nice. And it has the paper fingers like the earlier Smith Coronas too. Oh yeah. Uh -huh. I like the so that's ball. probably a, a, a interchangeable platen. It'll come out real quick, right? Um. Yeah, I think so. Split. So, yeah. which one's uh, had the interchangeable? Is it the silent the, only the silent super? I think the silent and the silent. Let me think. About, silent super for sure. I'm not sure about the silent. The silent. Let's see. This one's a silent. Um, Let's see if the super yeah, it, it does. I think. How do I know if it has to? Sterling doesn't have it. The inside I don't think. of the uh, carriage has yeah, the extra lever, right? Yeah. If you flip back the uh, the tab panel where the margin release is to expose the tab slugs, the mm -hmm. then you look on the right side inboard of the right knob. There's an extra little lever there that will release the car the platen. Yeah, that's probably the carriage lock it, it, it so if you look right above the platen the right platen knob the shaft of it mm -hmm. there should be a gap in the frame oh, where that would, where that would come out and yeah, you just so push the thing and <gasps> that, yeah that little lever right there the second lever the uh, that i think they're one, doing it right yeah you have to release the left 
clutch on the left uh -huh. knob. You have to oh. pull out the left clutch okay. button, and then you and then will okay. lift up that little lever. Uh -huh. Lift it up, not push it down. Yeah, yes, I think. The and then it just oh releases. It releases what? it. And you pull. You pull it out to the right. It came right out. Yeah. And then you can clean it. I didn't know yeah. there were those. Yeah, and you can and you can clean the uh, rollers wow. underneath also. Yeah. Wow. This one's actually pretty good. It's. it's yep. There it is. If the, I think if the machines are stored indoors, the yeah. pump, the rubbers tend to be okay enough to type on. And then so. what I discovered is if you have more than one of <laughs> that kind of five series, you can just get one oh, of the yeah. platens recovered and then yeah. swap it out between machines when you use them. That yep. instead of paying to have all the all the platens recovered. Oh, it's if, only it, it's such a great bargain tip. And the silent a hot swappable right? plan. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know about the tower, if the tower has that feature or not. Now, so. do well, I need to the, put it the back president in does. Way? The president, okay. Yeah, I yeah. think the tabulator might not have, but yeah. because I was looking for it last time. But I yeah, think it looks like that, does. that one does. There's a gap in there, so that yeah, the gap in the frame is your key right there above yeah. the shaft. Yep. Yeah. I guess yep. you have nice. to make sure you put it yeah. in exactly you need the, the president. Right, right way. Yeah, you have to. Uh, um, Make sure the clutch is pulled out on the left knob. Kitty. And, and then just snap it back in. <laughs> yeah. Wow, then, that's pretty neat. Yeah, yeah. It's really easy to do. I have a yeah. tabulator in here. Let me look at it. It's oh. interesting that the uh, those five series machines has the carriage centering device, but it's not quite a carriage. Not lock it. You're yeah. exactly uh, right, Bill. And but, that's the one of the few weak spots in, in the whole design. I think they're counting on you having it in the case. Well, the case, the knobs, yeah, the knobs hit, would hit the sides of the case and exactly. keep from moving. Yeah, I don't but think it doesn't it actually, it. it doesn't actually protect the escapement as much as the, a true lock would, mm -hmm. you know. Here's the tabulator. Oh, okay. And Interesting. here's the right side. So yes, this one, you'd have to take that piece of metal off before you can take okay. it out. I see, okay, yeah. I was wondering yeah. about that. One is a, this is the six CPI. It's a silent yeah. super, so of course it's going to have the right quick release, of course. So it's yep. still still naked. A naked <laughs> typewriter. A naked <laughs> typewriter. Oh, yes, it does have the quick release as well. Fantastic. Yeah. Yes. Awesome. This yes. So you can, and your, your electric also does, by the way, uh, May. So you can oh, yeah. actually just get uh, one of the platens recovered and then mm -hmm. just swap it out between machines when you use them. Mm -hmm. That's a good idea for him. And also the six series, uh, like your Galaxy 12s, I think are also quick release, if yes, I'm not mistaken. They are. They're very quick. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the brothers too, the, well, the signature. The signature. Are, sorry, okay. I'm walking away from the microphone, but this, these brothers, the signature brothers are the same way. They are really fast. Yeah. You can basically Come lift here. up, pop off the little side covers here and within oh. you know I lift up all your thingies and it's also got the same kind of lever that you just push down and oh, oh nice oops, it's easier if you move the carriage yeah. over this whoops maybe the other way no this way you may have to pull out the knob on the left or something if there's a clutch oh you gotta put it into a put it into free freewheeling or whatever freewheeling yeah, yeah yeah oh no there's one on the other side sorry there's a release lever on the it other side. It has two levers, one on each two. side. Oh, and so, yes, and this this typewriter came with a cracked platen. And so I, you know, this is the cursive one. So I took the platen out of my uh, least favorite one, the Elite. Oh, yeah. Just simply because yeah. the typeface is really small. Well, it, it makes it and, easier to clean the platens yes, also. You clean, get it out and you can clean it. And if you get something it. caught down in there, it's yeah. easy. Yeah, and you can mm -hmm. clean your, your pressure for your feed rollers better and mm -hmm. resurface them if you need to. Exactly. Yep. So quick release platforms are way to go. So, brother, thank you. So I mean, that, that's a reason, that's one reason to actually buy those kind of typewriters yes. or to and acquire them just for that purpose, right? And the same with mm -hmm. these too. The yeah. Is there anything yeah. like that on a Hermes this. baby, like any type of quick relief for the platform? No, I those are- My baby stopped. Shoot. Uh, yeah, no, those are, those are kind of difficult to, to take out. Uh, they're so small. 
Yeah, and there's little springs down there that hold the pressure rollers and give them spring Ooh. tension. It's really difficult to take the carriage apart without getting into a lot of trouble. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there you yeah. go. So these oh, come yeah. out nice. very nicely, too. I find nice. out why they're so loud. Because they're hollow. They're, flat, they're hollow. So I have stuffed <laughs> oh. a roll of little cloth oh. in there. I don't know if you can see it. And it helps yeah. kind of uh, mute the So I have a, a crazy bit. idea of suggestion. You know, you know those cans of expanding foam that oh, the yeah. that yes. window installers that use? I wonder if you would dare to spray some of that in there. That would <laughs> Not help. crazy. I just roll up some, That's some a great cloth idea. and put it in there. And it, it helps a little. Yeah. Maybe you just spend. Stuff. Yeah, tissue dispenser. <laughs> yeah, you got David, That's a good idea, Joe. David Tenson. <laughs> uh, David Tenson is in the comments uh, asking which model that is. Uh, this one? Yeah. The Electra. Oh, Smith Corona Electra 220. Yeah. Ah, uh, okay. But the Galaxy 12s, any of those 1960s 12-inch carriage Smith Coronas will have the, the quick-release platen like that. I think most of them did. All, I think all of, yeah. Yeah. They all do, yeah. Yeah. The 6 Series, I think that became a standard, right? Yeah. Eric six. is sorry that he disappeared without saying goodbye. Yeah. Hi, Eric. It's nice having you. Nice. Meeting. Yeah. Hopefully yeah. he comes back next week. Yes. Don't be shy. Yeah, we're nice. <laughs> we don't bite we don't much. Bite. We don't bite uh, much. So th this is this is officially the longest episode. <laughs> uh, yes. Wow. Uh, I, I think go. I'm going to be signing off here myself. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. I, before before I end, I I did. Uh, we haven't touched bases with with Ted. Does Ted uh -oh. have anything to so? show? Uh, well, I've got my uh, Triumph Perfect over here that I've been typing on, but you've been... Yeah. Let's uh, see. Um, I want to see. Let's see. It's a black one? or no, oh, no, it's oh, it's that one. It's ivory. That... Oh, here we go. nice. There. Oh, yeah. oh, it looks a lot yeah, like an that. Alpine, Alpina, Alpina. If you've, uh, if, if you've seen the movie um, Populaire, the French one, about I've been period. trying to get an English copy of it. I have a, a an unreadable copy that I bought from that, overseas. So. Yeah, that that will be. Uh, I when I bought mine, I, I had to, to get. Uh, 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 I had to hack my DVD player to play different regions. Yeah, uh, yeah, how did you get that to work? I haven't been able to have any luck with it. Uh, the particular uh, DVD player I had at the time um, was one that you could rewrite the the ROM image on. And so mm. I, I basically wrote a French ROM image on, on the uh, DVD player's thing. But in, in a computer, uh, you can actually just uh, tell the player to uh, uh, play that region. Play that region, and it'll do it. So or if you have a VPN, oh. if you have a VPN, right? Uh, you no, could... that, that's, it's different. The, the oh, is it? Okay. has its own okay. Uh, oh, Maybe, region. Okay. Well, maybe I, if I, I get like a... a DVD player for my, that I could attach to my MacBook or something. Yeah. yeah, actually, but... your MacBook. Oh wait, you MacBook probably doesn't have a DVD player. On it. Yeah, I've got no. a MacBook Air and it doesn't have it anymore. You're, yeah, you're yeah. gonna ha have to hit up the typewriter black market. Yeah, <laughs> I actually have that movie that I that I uh, digitized into a file. Oh. You do, so, yeah, but it's in French. It doesn't have the English subtitles. Uh, uh, so, Ted, did you have to? Do you have to smoke Galois like that if you're watching <laughs> the movie? Yeah, yeah. We oui, oui, it's, <laughs> it's it's very French. And we're a beret. But, uh, yeah. It's a, it's a great oh. movie. You don't. It's need a to great movie. It too. No. To, yeah. Yeah. To look at all the pretty pictures. But uh, so this, good. this is the typewriter that she shows at the very beginning where she's like, oh, I want to be a typewriter person. Yeah, Ooh. really? That would do it. That would make me, out. yes. Yeah. It, mm -hmm. And this, I'm easy. Um, I went with brother. It didn't take the much. Triumph, <laughs> the whole brother. The whole brother. People <laughs> talk about uh, the Olympias and, and the Alpinas and Vosses, mm -hmm. all those German made mm -hmm. typewriters. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the Triumph is also a German made typewriter. And it yes. is just as Erica. beautifully made as. Uh, yes any of those machines and mm -hmm. i i like it a lot it's a very, very smooth have, typewriter 
No, yeah, I wouldn't it looks uh, amazing. say no it's the exact to one. same model but... that um, Matt had at Ace when I was in there, but it looks like it. And, mm -hmm. and it was a really cool machine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just yeah. beautifully. So gorgeous. Everything about it just reeked of of, of quality. And yeah. um, <laughs> it was, I, I was happy just to get to type on it for a little bit, you know. Yeah. yeah. I was happy to find that machine at a Goodwill for $10. <laughs> oh. <laughs> 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 just back in the yeah. days before the typewriter yeah. revolution, just, right? Just How do you was, do this? It was yeah. only a few years ago. So was it? it, was, yeah. it was, oh my uh, gosh! It was an anomaly oh, in my hunting nice. at that point. Well, see, I, I've been to so Phoenix cool. a few times and visited Ted a few times, and mm -hmm. the thing is, he may not realize, but I think because of the, the snowbird culture uh, down there, I think your thrift stores have more quality stuff than other places usually there, there are a couple reasons that that uh i've been so lucky over the past 10 years and it's because our goodwills were not a part of the national auction uh, site. Uh, so they didn't send their typewriters to the national auction they just uh -huh. put them in the stores and uh, <laughs> also because again people you know old people come here to die so oh. it's, 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 it's a snowbird place yeah oh, yeah, boy. yeah. Uh, so we get lots of closets full of... Uh, Plus you go every day, too. Yeah. I did at the time. I haven't in the past year. At the time, every single day. Yeah, that, yeah. that helps. But, but see, that's one of my my fond memories is when I visited Ted, he took me around to the thrift stores. Oh, nice. <laughs> that was a lot of fun. That would be cool. I have yeah. a hunting pattern. He does. Basically <laughs> my dream, my dream life. This is, this is going to be a tour that's uh, coming up after the, the pandemic, right? We can sign right. up and, and uh, you'll take us around. Thrift oh, there you go, Sarah. <laughs> I was thinking about getting oh, a, nice. like those camera glasses that you can wear. That oh, yeah. yeah. Or a GoPro camera. And, and just came like, with it. Taking <laughs> along with my uh, on my thrift store runs and you know, thrifting with Ted. Rider, hunter. Yeah. Or letting you guys experience yeah. firsthand my hunts. Thrifting yeah. with Ted. I like that. <laughs> I would love that. First person that. POV. Yes, I would be watching it. And then we can put it. on our VR goggles and watch <laughs> right. as if we were there with you, right? It's Reach right. through and touch. Find the typewriter. yourself trying to touch grab the typewriter, the typewriter before Ted gets it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, I have a little yeah. question for you, typewriter expert. Okay. So sometimes, and it doesn't happen all the time, when I insert my paper. The leading edge, I don't know if you can yeah. see, it kind of tears sometimes. Why is that? You know, because it doesn't happen all the time. It only happens sometimes. So what am I doing wrong to make my paper catch and tear? The paper pan is a little high is the problem. And it's catching the edge of the paper as you're feeding it in. That's that silver tray at the- So for the feed rollers are attached yeah. to? Yeah, so when you pull your platen out, you'll see a silver pan that's kind of loosely floating around in there. Uh -huh. And what's what's happening is it's either misaligned or it's too high, uh -huh. uh, so it's it's not the the uh, feed rollers aren't quite clearing it completely. Mm, so it's catching on the metal it's, somewhere yeah. in the yeah. Feed and you'll rollers. see that that pattern. You see the how the it looks. It like happens on the same place. Yeah, yeah it looks yeah. like a crenellation looks, right there in the back. Yeah, you're right. You're and right. it'll match. It'll match with that thing. And what you need to do mm -hmm. is you need to mm -hmm. form the mounts for the paper pan so that it sits a little farther back okay. mm -hmm. and it's it's kind of a fiddly adjustment but it that's requires bending do. metal too yep. at the same time phoenix yeah. typewriter did a video on that recently oh really oh. okay yeah oh. dwayne yeah mm -hmm. okay and dwayne jensen yeah so dwayne look jensen. that up and 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 maybe try sure. to, to do some forming on that pan and it'll fix mm -hmm. that problem yeah that, that makes sense because as i rub my finger over it i can tell some of them are are bent mm -hmm. further out than others. Yep. So it's just probably a result of being under pressure for many, many, many years. Yeah. Or, you know, might or have gotten just, a knock, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Because that pen just kind of mm -hmm. sits in there on a spring. It just floats, basically, yeah. sort uh, of. Yeah. It, it's just a it's just a matter of getting it uh, situated exactly where it needs to be. Hmm. It, it's uh, an easy tag. Yes. Is your um does on uh, um on your uh, either the typewriter database or or your um um blogging uh, site is there a contact for you where I can email you? Archivist at typewriterdatabase dot com. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> that works. Mm -hmm. Nice. <laughs> or or monkey dot org. Either one will work. 
Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. That no. one's easier. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you spell M O N K, right? right. As long as you don't speak that way, then I went over that earlier. He is the monk yeah. of typewriters. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Does anybody else have anything else they want to show before we sign off? No, we better say some for next time, right? I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> this has been an epic episode. It was a great way to kick off the year, Gregory. Yes. Exactly. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah, okay, yeah. shall we finish with a wave? Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, the sports wave. Wave. Bye, everybody. Wave. Everyone stand bye, up. Bye. Sit down. Bye. Happy New bye. Year. Bye. Happy, Happy New Year. Year. Happy New Year. Right. Happy New Year. Right. Year. Right. Year. Right. See you next time.